Hey, Internet. March 21st. Patch Adam Returns. That's right. The in-store punk rock patch pin what have you event we named after the lovable lovable 90s movie starring Robin Williams. Wait, what? I named it after a radioactive man's catchphrase in The Simpsons. You made that up. Up and at them. Up and at them. Patch at them. Oh, whatever. Doesn't Mr. Burns control the the nu- Just nu- move nuclear? Just move on. It's March 21st. It's Patch Adam. That's right. We got some DIY vendors. They got cool shit. They got patches. They got pins. They got candles. They got shirts. They've got all the accoutrement your little crusty heart desires. And not just that, we're having a book drive here. That's come, right. bring some books, new and used, all ages, whatever. If you've got some books, come and donate them. They're all going to go to the Duchess Pride Center's new lending library. How cool. Yeah. So come do some good, find some cool shit, and hang out with us. That's going cool. on from 12 to 5 on Saturday, March 21st. See you there. Hi, I'm Patrick McGuire from the Poughkeepsie Grind. At 107 Main Street, Poughkeepsie, New York. I roast my own coffee. I put it in a bag. I do the labels. I do it all. It's delicious. At least people keep coming back. And that's important to a good business. So we make our waffles from scratch. We do egg sandwiches, bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, whatever the fuck you want. If I have it in the fridge, I'll put it together, and you can have it. You trade me the green things for the egg things, and everyone goes home happy. I'll even tell you about how my kids are doing, if you ask. I'll tell you how your day's doing. Because I love you. I also love good coffee. Come check it out. www.grindpoughkeepsie.com or illuminatedcoffee.com. Purchase some, pick it up in store, have it sent to your house. I don't care. Like I said, I'll do what you want. For money. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Internet. Darkside Records is, of course, your home for Record Store Day which this year was just announced is going to be on Saturday, April 18th. So mark your calendars now and stay tuned. We're going to have all your list updates, all the gooch going on, and get yourself ready mentally and physically for the biggest day of the year at Darkside Records. Now let's get to the podcast. Zoom. This is the Dark Side Records and Gallery Podcast. And welcome back to tonight's record store list reading. Tonight we'll be doing a acapella reading of the 2020 Record Store Day. That would be amazing. Lists. So uh, go ahead and make tap off your glass. Tap that ass. And let's get into these records. <laughs> that was so 70s R&B radio of you. I thought you were going for like ASMR. Like, <laughs> Mm, tonight we're going over the record store day list. Oh, do you feel the paper? It's so soft. On to the next page. Soft and delicate. Mm. Infectious grooves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do, uh, we don't. <laughs> Deep throating a beer doesn't come across well in the audio format. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm glad there's no video. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> We don't do headphones anymore. We used to do headphones for these. I can hear you pretty well with my ears. Right, yeah. right. I feel like, you know what? Headphones are great for people who don't know how to get like a good mic level, mm. like for themselves. So if you have like a guest on who doesn't do this enough. Yeah. Like we have uh, a couple guys on staff, Gurk, who could use <laughs> headphones because like we'll be doing the Rex Today podcast and he'll be like, Hello, I'm Gurk and this is my picks. I think he does that on purpose because he's high. <laughs> he's no. Because like, he's like, yeah, he's always very smiley, like the lean back, yeah, he's right like, up against he knows, it. He's always out until it's his turn. <laughs> this is behind the scenes for the listeners. Is Girk is asleep on the podcast <laughs> until it's his turn? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hey, internet, welcome to the Dark Side Records podcast. This is, of course, a podcast brought to you by the good folks at Dark Side Records, located in the heart of the Queen City, six eleven Duchess Turnpike in Poughkeepsie. I like that. That's uh, good. I think you're the first guest to join in. I know. Oh, man. I'm a top fan. What can I say? Or, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or on the web at Darkside Records. 
Dot com. Oh, fuck, I missed that one. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're making them up as we go. Like uh, they're they're like right. they're very organic responses. These hey, things. Respect, man. We I just sort of kind of clout in that, you know. Yeah, they just happen. This is of course a podcast where we like to talk about music, the music industry, vinyl records, JB's soreness, among other things. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, good save. That's right. Uh, update for anyone who's listening. Last episode. My butt is still sore. I feel like it was a few it's weeks a ago good now. Chair right? was, I think that was two weeks and and change. Is maybe that's it all it was. Maybe it was two weeks ago exactly. Who hurt you? Mm. Uh, the floor he of, hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> the floor of the roller derby rink where oh. I was uh, where I was skating. I fell directly on my tailbone, mm. bruised my coccyx. He's getting a little too into whoop. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> No, was this the open skate or is this like? It was. Uh, it was in fact the final open skate yeah. at uh, the castle okay. down in Goshen. Sweet. And uh, they were tearing out the roller rink, so it was the final one. So there was like a big go big or go home. Right? It was like it was a big last, roller derby like celebratory burn it, thing. Burn with drink it beers. Down. Maybe drinking beers was the issue. It, maybe. No, never. No, <laughs> not an option. Maybe it helped actually in the long run. <laughs> maybe. You know, at the time, it was a pretty rough. Uh, it was a pretty rough fall. Uh, my butt. Pretty sore, pretty sore. I will say, what a trooper! For anyone who's keeping tabs, listeners at home, it's much better. How it, was how was the bruising? I think last time we talked, it had just happened. Um, Usually, the bruising takes happen. a couple days. Well, well, here I'll, if, <laughs> no, I'm gonna. Just, all right, <laughs> there you go. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys a picture of the bruising. We're going full man spread. Here. <laughs> this was no. This it, you didn't have to go that far. It didn't bruise into the crack. It this didn't get near the. This joke is going the, very wrong. It didn't get near the sphincter. I'm being shown a picture. It was like top of the crack. <laughs> is it so? This is isn't typo negative. Right tip now. of the iceberg. No, this right is here. this is tip of the iceberg. So <laughs> this is the day after. This is the picture. Oh, <laughs> that Jenny took. <laughs> <laughs> Can this please be the photo for the uh, podcast? No. no. <laughs> if you could describe that for a listener at home, if how you've you ever do- seen the cover of the chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water, it looks a lot like that. It's just something you don't want to look at. It looks like a hairy <laughs> nebula. <laughs> I thought it looked like you can't look away though. It's it was like if Rorschach became morbidly <laughs> obese from The Watchmen. <laughs> It's like, uh, it's like a, a stray cat you're concerned about, but you want to keep tabs on. And for reference here, I'll show you guys what it looks like today. Oh boy. You guys, you guys tell me how the bruising compares. Here, I'll do a side by side. It looks like you didn't know how to wipe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like my first wife, a children's story. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of purple at the top of the crack. Not like I said, it doesn't go in the crack. It just stays at the top. It's almost, nice. um, this falls into the category of among other things. Things for the people. It's <laughs> almost vaginal. The picture itself? Yeah. I tried to take a very sensual photo <laughs> of my bruised, very purple blood vessel in butt crack. Here, here's today. You okay, tell me if it's right. better. Uh, it's, it's improving, for sure. Hold on. I need some, yes, shed yes. some light on the situation. <laughs> if we could get a spotlight in there. Oh, all yeah, I, all I see there. is hair. You've got a tiny interior bruise, but you look okay. Okay. I'm not going to go any deeper. I'm assuming JJ took a picture of that. I did not, actually. It would have been smart. But, oh, my God. (laughs) How much does that picture look like this Georgia O'Keeffe (laughs) painting? Oddly similar, yes, yes. Your body is a wonderland, JB. If only she had been into roller derby. (laughs) Could have been a whole separate, uh, you know, theme she went on. Wow. So anyway, we're here with a special guest uh, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think my stomach just turned a little bit. <laughs> oh, get, buckle up, buddy. <laughs> uh, we're here with a special guest. We have uh, Poughkeepsie Local, uh, regular on our Use to for Use Facebook live streams that we do on Monday nights. Self-admitted top fan of the store. I hope I'm not misquoting myself and... I got to check my badge when I get home, make sure I <laughs> still got some credibility. Well, uh, we are top fans of your oh, place. Oh, shoot. Shucks. We have uh, Pat McGuire from the Poughkeepsie Grind here with us. What's up, everybody? That's Thanks 107 Main Street. Yes, he got it. In oh, Poughkeepsie. <laughs> Finally got the address right. I've had it right for a while, actually. 117. 117, <laughs> 137. Keep going. For the record. 
we've always known. <laughs> uh, for the record, also, yes, I uh, just want to let you guys know, these guys made a massive mistake inviting me on the uh, maybe biggest music-oriented podcast you guys do here, so... Um, I can't wait to drag you guys through the mud. That remains <laughs> to be seen. <laughs> That's right. It's, of course, this episode. Uh, we get together here for a special occasion. It is because... The list is out. The list. The Record Store Day list mm. is live. Mm. And it came out a couple days ago. Mm. I won't bury the lead here, oh. but we're going to talk about it. But before we do that, let's talk about some other things. First and foremost... We got a couple beers here in front of us. I can open it now. Yes, you may open okay. it now. Uh, I'll do the ASMR. I'm gonna go be for open, it. Do opening it. the can now. It's gonna be. Oh, oh yeah, so good, <laughs> so good. That's yeah, a beverage, that's folks. I'm going to open the Millhouse Brewing Company's Grocery Getter Citrus New England Style India Pale Ale. Is whispering a part of it, or are we just making that up? I think it's just. Uh, I heard a thing on Howard Stern once about this. <laughs> I had an equilibrium, if anybody cares. Of course, we want to thank the good folks at both Millhouse Brewing and Equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Last podcast, we had uh, the same ones here. In fact, I'm drinking the same one that we had last time, the Kettle Soured Ale, which is conditioned on Blackberry. One single Single, Blackberry. one lone Blackberry. I'm drinking a sour because, as we know, I don't uh, get down on IPAs. I don't agree with my constitution. What are you drinking, JJ? Uh, as I mentioned in the ASMR oh, sorry. Portion, <laughs> I'm drinking the Millhouse Grocery Getter uh, New England Style IPA. Mm. I have the Equilibrium Double IPA, because mm. I have to drink one to make up for the one JB's not drinking. Mm. Uh, governing Forces uh, from Middletown, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that where Equilibrium is? Mm-hmm. Whatever, they got a cool facility next to a beautiful new skate park. The city Ooh. just dumped a lot of money into, so kudos to you guys for holding it down to... Skateboarders. Hmm, true, true. Well, for uh, listeners at home, before we get to listen, why don't uh, tell people who don't know a little bit about your place. Like they don't know. Oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> um, I'm Pat, Patrick McGuire. I own the Poughkeepsie Grind. We've mm-hmm. been there for closing out four years now. Uh, when I moved to Poughkeepsie, I was a district manager for a past life. And this was kind of the central area for my district, so it was easy to jump off, go north or south from here. You were a district manager for every time I die? Yeah, I wish. I wish. I wish. No, skateboard stores, coincidentally. Um, Zoomies. should give you a shout out. Oh, I should tell you about this job that I like, worked <laughs> for one day. <laughs> we'll talk about this about uh, the man, mall life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I was living here, uh, I studied business, doing a, a coffee shop concept was something I worked on just as a hobby and found a spot that kind of made sense um, and uh, built a fun little business around a community, try to put as much back into the community that supports us. And, you know, it's been awesome knowing you guys since you guys had the small spot down on a, uh, is this the same street technically? And uh, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah. 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 one becomes the other. A stone's throw from here, if you will. Been a big fan of you guys ever since and. Started collecting records up in Albany, and luckily you guys were here when I got here. So, where did you collect records in Albany? Let's see, Last Vestige for sure. Got a few from them. Internet, Hot Topic. All right, so yeah, working next to the mall in the mm-hmm. mall that mm-hmm. was conveniently located next to a Hot Topic. So having their limited releases all the time was very convenient. Did you get an employee discount? No. Son of a bitch. Well, you worked at Zoomies, not Hot Topic. I know. It's all the same shit, bro. It's different though. And I was a, I was a high dollar generating good person. Like, can't cut me out like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bite the hand that feeds you. If uh, only you had known Brian back then. Uh, shucks. He was a hot topicer. Oh, yeah. He's got a, he's got a few himself, he says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I did know Brian. We worked next to each other in the Galleria. There you go. Yeah, when I met my wife. So. Aw. Yeah. I'm originally from Amsterdam, New York. Oh, really? Not the Netherlands. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 518, what's up? Yeah, what up, bro? That's what I'm saying. What are you, 315? Get out of my face, bro. 914. <laughs> my uh, whole school district is uh, closed this week because of coronavirus. Ah, man, you know, I asked my insurance company if I could get a payout in case some shit hit the fan. Ooh. Mm, they're not going to do it. That's what I hear. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, talking with uh, one of my vendors who uh, is going to be at 
our Patch Adam Punk Rock Flea Market, which oh. is, of course, happening here March 21st at Dark Side Records. It's an indoor punk rock flea market. And they were talking about um, how they work in a in a school district, and their husband works in uh, something in the movie industry and sets and building and something. Okay. Don't ask me specifics, because I don't know them. I'm not actually trying to protect anyone. I just don't I, remember any of the details. Can I get specifics? <laughs> um, and uh, just the same thing, talking about... Uh, struggling with communicating with insurance companies and how they're not uh, budging on a lot of shit. We're all too small. They, yeah. They ain't gonna help us. Yeah. Yeah. But also, genuinely, don't think it's gonna be a big thing. Like, I think a lot of people are gonna get it, but that's about it. Definitely gonna get it. Mm-hmm. But most of if us... If we're lucky. Mm-hmm. Most of us are gonna be fine. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll just uh, go about our we business. We got a table full of optimists here. I don't, I don't it's know. not very often, but <laughs> I, I, I think it's hype. Uh, it's my mom. I'm staying the fuck away from my mom. Yeah. Like, if Westchester is closed, that makes me feel like we all have it. Well, We're just not going to know for like Well, a it's month, in Albany. Know? Saratoga right. Springs. It's in Ulster. Yeah. It's here. Right. So yeah. I'm just going to stay the fuck away from my mom. High five, bro. Love my mom. No, but she, no fuck. Now we got to wash hands. <laughs> fuck. Uh, I want, now I want to itch my face, and I should not do that. Uh, got something on your nose. But, you know, she's she's, you know. She's up there, and she's frail mm. and has a terrible um, immune system. Yeah. So it's like, that's that's who I want to just stay away from. It's a cause wanna... to be cautious. You know, if anything, it's uh, give everybody a reason to revisit their own hygiene. For sure. Exactly. Hey, guys, just a reality check here. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanliness is godliness. God is You'd... empty. Just like me. Just like me. I was going to say. Me too, bro. Nice. <laughs> We're talking to the punk community. We're not great on hygiene here. Yeah. That's, you know. mm-hmm. Rock and roll, right? Yeah, exactly. But so you're... Uh, not an endorsement of Dark Side <laughs> <laughs> But so your store, uh, Poughkeepsie Grind, is in the same location where I worked, God, a million years ago. Soul Dog. Where I worked at Soul Dog, That's yeah. That's right. And, uh, 107 Main Street 107. in Poughkeepsie. You only got the first one. He's Check him out on the web. He's one for three. PoughkeepsieGrind.com. Poughkeepsie. Grind Poughkeepsie. Grind Poughkeepsie. Or uh, com. Illuminated Coffee. IlluminatedCoffee.com. We've uh, we started roasting our own coffee about two two years ago now. Um, just a little side project. Kind of grown it a little bit. Uh, more so just to support the in-store business. You know, it helped financially to just kind of keep the wheels on the bus. But uh, it's been a fun little project, and we keep trying to grow that little business. Now available at Adams and Poughkeepsie and Wappingers, so that's exciting. We should have it here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how business is done. <laughs> it's just that easy, folks. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been an awesome trip, you know. To have you know, I'm from, like I said, I'm from upstate. My wife's from down here, so to have like a community come around and and buy into what we were doing so fast, and I met my sh- my head chef. Uh, he's been, he was my first hire when I, we started the place and he's still with me today. So shout out to Rashawn, Ease, the chef. Um, Say yeah. Ease or Eves? Ease. Ease. Okay. Yeah, it was Ease. We have an Eves. I know. With a Y. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. I see you, Eves. I'm quick on the dibs finger. <laughs> <laughs> Coming for you. Um, no, but it's been a trip, you know, to, to meet so many people and build this crazy network of people we know. It's been, it's been awesome. Shout out to Millhouse and... And Equilibrium, all the other brewers around here, you know. So many breweries mm-hmm. popping up. Mm-hmm. Breweries, here. businesses. It's, it's, just the, it's awesome. Where, uh, what's the other one that we're supposed to be getting? Right down the corner of like Academy and 44? Zeus just popped up. We actually, yeah. We yep. did a beer collab with them. It's awesome. I it's tried cool. to go there for dinner a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was like, Packed, I, I didn't have a reservation. It was like an Packed, hour and a half wait. They're like, killing it right now. Sorry, I'll, I'll come back another time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amit, the brewer, does an awesome job. Um, some really creative, like, Pretty diverse uh, portfolio too, you know. He's got uh, American lagers, IPAs, double IPAs, a sour, which was crazy refreshing. Um, the uh, the coffee stout we do, uh, room for milk. He's got an um, imperial espresso porter, if I remember. Ooh, crazy mm. stuff, killing it. You know what's crazy about the one the moment I was in there? Yeah, and I think it speaks very well to the area. So I go in in this packed house, like. People at the bar, people sitting, mm-hmm. packed. And I look around, and I didn't recognize a single person. And that's not, it's a little rare, because like, I yeah. interact with a lot of the community here. And I looked around, and I thought, man, 
I hope all these people, like some of these people are local, but I hope people are actually traveling and coming out and seeing that yeah. Poughkeepsie has something to offer them in terms of nightlife. Yeah, it's coming through. I mean, you guys hold it down for like a big retailer. I think a lot is a big piece of what the city kind of misses is, you know, things to do in between getting shit faced. So, right. You know, <laughs> you got to take a break. <laughs> but I didn't on Sunday. And it was awesome. <laughs> Well, and you also, you do a lot for the local skate community and for the local skate park. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I have to be honest, I've taken a little bit of a step back to, you know, I have uh, my second child this year, or last year. Thank you. So it's, I've been meaning to get back down there, and we've got some repairs to do, but we adopted the skate park of Poughkeepsie down at Warriors Park as the coffee shop. Uh, like, I, the business I came from, it just kind of translated really well, made sense, and you know, give me a little hobby to do on the side. So, mm-hmm. you know, once you finish building your coffee shop, you're kind of like, all right, just keep on do something else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been awesome. You know, keep the kids down there, give them something to do. Justin's just said his daughter wants to learn how to skate. So, you know, still a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. It was when I was a kid. So, I don't think we had a skate park where I grew up. That I'm aware of. We are Amsterdam did this crazy thing where they like went all in and built like a 14 foot half pipe, and none of us could fucking skate it. We're, we're like, oh, no. this is what you wanted, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. I think there was like one person who could do it, and that was really it. But she weathered. Amsterdam, man, I can't believe they had a skate park. They actually do now. Again, they built a little tiny one. They actually built like a phase two onto it down by. Uh, down by the waterfront. What's crazy is to watch Amsterdam be like a smaller version of Poughkeepsie. They built like a pedestrian walkway to connect the south side and the north side. I haven't Um, been to Amsterdam in like 10 years. They just received like the downtown revitalization grant from New York. So they have like $10 million. Hey, we just got one too. Right? Here in Poughkeepsie. That's what I'm saying. Now spend it wisely. Yeah, we'll (laughs) see. I think we're, seems like we're doing okay things. Like we're reviving some public parking. I think that's definitely needed in Poughkeepsie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'll single-handedly pay for it with my parking tickets if anyone <laughs> getting destroyed over here. But yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, it's cool to, like I said, to have the community come and support me. It's just a, it's a fun way to give back to it. So it's what I've always done. Something I'm passionate about. So I might not. My days are probably numbered on a skateboard, but I'll be that weird old guy. How's your butt? Give it when you fall. Um, uh, it's more my knees. My okay. knees are shot. But butt's okay. You guys want to see it anyway, though? Let's do it. Here we go. (laughs) Well, so we're here to talk about the Record Store Day list. Record Store Day is happening, of course, April 18th, 2020, here at Darkside Records or at your local independent record store, depending on where you are. I don't know your life. Uh, We open at 9 a.m. We have a whole bunch of fun stuff that we have planned. Uh, There will be free coffee. Courtesy of the good folks. Free fucking coffee. At the Poughkeepsie Grind at IlluminatedCoffee.com. Dot com. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> if you've ever been to an event here at the store before and gotten a coffee right when you walk in the door. You say coffee? Coffee. 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 <laughs> We're bringing up the islanders now. This is, this oh. is ours now. <laughs> <laughs> we all say it. Uh, that's Pat. That's Poughkeepsie Grind. Mm-hmm. We have a whole bunch of fun stuff that's going to be going on all day. We're going to have uh, a, a massive store-wide sale. We're going to have some kind of giveaways. We're going to have uh, uh, Ben & Jerry's is going to be here once again giving out free ice cream. The Ben & Jerry's? The Ben and or Jerry and or <laughs> our friend who works at Ben & Jerry's in Medicine Avenue, <laughs> Albany. All right. Yeah. One of For those sure. three will be here. Uh, but they're here and they always give out free ice cream, you know. Give a donation to a good charity. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have an animal shelter that's going to be here that we'll be doing some kind of raffle for and raising money for them. I'm bringing up the van. Free the coffee. So I can, there you go. Uh, we're, of course, going to have food. G Money is going to be here once again making his... Chicken and waffles, right? He's world famous. You or know, at least Poughkeepsie famous. I, 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 yeah, a lot of them. Everyone's doing it, but this guy does it right. I'll tell you Dude, what. 
He's like, got the right waffle maker. Don't you also make uh, fried chicken and waffles? Yeah, I don't want to take away his shine, but you know. I <laughs> uh, no, let's let's get some fucking competition going. <laughs> no, yes. man, the dude knows what's up. Maybe we should have a, like a waffle off or I something. Love you know, this idea. I would say I would only respect a man by his waffle iron, and this guy's got the right one. He's got so. a serious waffle iron. Look, yeah. they make in Poughkeepsie. They make a fucking fest for anything. There's like beer fest, whiskey fest. Waffle there's fest? a there's a seltzer fest. There's wing fest, well, waffle con, taco fest. We're gonna have waffle off, and that's all just town square. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anthony Verano. <laughs> We're gonna have waffle off right here at Darkside. We're gonna have all oh, the local shit. waffle makers. This is great. You get oh tickets. You get to sample all the wow. different waffles. Genuinely, a, a good idea. We'll get you guys your electricity bill. G money. <laughs> <Bro. laughs> we'll, we'll, Each one of those needs a dedicated circuit. Guy brings a generator with him. Because I know. The it's... first year he fucking blew, literally blew a circuit. They're Not the just real deal. It, blew it. Yeah. And the, it was the same circuit our computers were on. Oh no! You should have seen us run <laughs> Shit. in the middle of record store Shit. day. Get the extension cords. Yeah, oh. we were running extension cords from up here oh, at the stage no. up to the front just to power the computers. <laughs> yeah, that shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, you live and you learn, right? Yeah, we, we certainly <laughs> did. That's all you can do. Uh, we're also going to have live music. Uh, we have a bunch of great performers. Uh, Alex Cano, who played in the store before, is going to be here. Uh, Sierra Fergale is going to be here. Uh, a bunch of rock bands. Manu, Ghost Fields, Cold Heaven, Wall of Ego. Uh, there's going to be a WRRV presented Hunsed Valley Homegrown Showcase with some great bands. There's going to be fun stuff all day long. We open at 9 a.m. As it is every year. You know, we encourage you. Come early. Come as early as you see fit I was once the first person in line I remember for that a record store day yeah it was I want to say what you're in line for <laughs> brand new baby dead air <laughs> <laughs> oh man I should have flipped that record when I had it man when I had the chance damn you damn you Jesse but that is, in fact, what brings us all here today is those exclusive releases. Every year there are hundreds of exclusive uh, vinyl releases and sometimes some other releases that come out. Uh, and they're only available at independent record stores. The list is out. The list is live. You can see the list over on our website, darksiderecords.com. You could also go and RSVP to the Facebook event. We'll be sending out updates. We'll be sending out fun stuff, keeping you in the loop about everything that's going down. And I thought... As I do this time of year every year, we should just go over the list, share some things we like, share some things we're excited about, share, just share some cool shit that we heard. Maybe there's some things that uh, you're really excited about. Of course, let us know. Uh, head on over to darksiderecords.com. Use the Darkside Dream phone. You can. Uh, they're not pre-orders. As the Record Store Day rules go, we'll go over those in a few. No pre-orders, no holds. Just show up, first come, first serve. And uh, we'll talk about some of them. We'll talk about cool shit. Maybe some things that you've gone through the list. Maybe you perused past something. Maybe something didn't catch your eye. Get caught slipping. And we'll uh, maybe we'll share something new and get you excited about something you uh, haven't tried before. We've got the cure. We've got the cure. No, I'm just reading the list, man. You got the cure. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going for like the cure for boring music or something like that. You know, like we got that too. We also have the actual cure. <laughs> So, um, like I said, the list is over on our website. You can go see it now and read along with us. Who wants to uh, go first? Uh, I'll start. Why not? I think one of the first things that caught my eye this year was the 40th anniversary reissue of uh, The Boys Next Door with their album Door Door. Which, of course, as you know me, is a Nick Cave piece. So <laughs> it's uh, this is pre Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, pre the birthday party. This is going all the way back to the Aussie times. Aussie, Aussie, oi oi. And uh, yeah, so you got. Uh, there's been a couple of reissues in the past. Like I think that label Drastic Plastic did one a few years back. But uh, here we go. Get an official, beautiful. 5,000 copies. I'm surprised that they're making that many copies of an obscure <clears throat> Nick Cave project from the early 80s. <laughs> wow. You're not alone. That's commitment. You're not alone, Jeff. I got some kids, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this Rockabye Baby Wu-Tang edition. I, I, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be awesome. It's uh, 
Something I could probably easily Spotify, but no, it'll sound <laughs> way doper. I wonder if they. I wonder if they even do the digital. It's like I think it's like one girl that makes most of these. Rock the Rocket by Babies? I think so, yeah. Let me, show, let me see if I can... On a... Look, you're dealing with parents who have screaming children. Yeah. They don't want to deal with like trying to find the record every time. Right? They just want a playlist that's four hours long. I just want to sing Bring the Motherfucking Ruckus. <laughs> 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 no, but I've had a few of the collection. I've had um, Fleetwood Mac. There's a Jay-Z copy that's awesome. There's so many. There's like Beastie Boys ones. So many. Yeah. It's like Infinity. Whatever your favorite uh, genre or artist is. If you've got some kids and you're tired of watching Blippy, fucking Frozen, <laughs> <laughs> just throw this shit on, you'd be like, ah, all right. What were you saying? Yeah. In Should fact, we... I, have a, I have a friend, shout out to Good Nick Curtis, who works over at Lola's in Poughkeepsie, uh, who he also just recently had had child, and uh, he is also a collector of all the Rockabye babies, and pretty much, in fact, we have a thing where it's, you know, if any of them come in, he just straight up just That's comes fine. and buys them. Well, something else that uh, is coming out. This one is for the, uh, you know, the real nerdery of the collectors. Just like last year, there are three-inch exclusive records. Mm. That's right. Last year, they put out the RSD3. That was the three-inch turntable that plays uh, this format that they're sort of reintroducing back into the States, the three-inch records. And this year, you can get four different ones. From Post Malone. So far. So far. Yeah. Uh, I I have nothing to back this up, <laughs> but I suspect that there will be other late additions to the three-inch game this year. My wife is a closet Post Malone fan. Uh, she doesn't like to you know, say that, but I'm going to put her on, Here I'm gonna put her on blast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh. Um, so I might have to get one of these little turntables just so I could get this little collection here. They're adorable. <laughs> yeah, we do have them. In fact, they just introduced a new three-inch turntable. I would just like to point out that on the Record Store Day website, the first category is three inches. Mm -hmm. But as they wrote it, it's RSD three-foot three vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <They're> very big. <laughs> very different turntable. Yeah, you're gonna, Size you're gonna matters, guys. <laughs> three feet. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna have it's four. Just like the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna have uh, uh, four songs: "Goodbyes," "Sunflower," "Wow," and "Souvenir de Saint." Tru oh, Saint Tropez, <clears throat> like the uh, Pink Floyd song. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, "Sunflower" being from the Into the Spider Verse soundtrack. True. But so four different three-inch records. He's also got a full length coming out for the first time on vinyl, I think. That's right. As well. Who? What? Post Malone. Post Malone. Hollywood's He's bleeding. Stuff on vinyl. He, uh, uh, Hollywood's, Hollywood's bleeding for the first time on Record uh, okay. Store Day. Oh, <laughs> I understand what we're talking about. Record yeah. Store Day. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, how about, pretty excited for this one too, mm -hmm. the Miles Davis double image. Rare Miles from the Complete Bitches Brew Sessions. Bitches Brew. So this is 50 years later, stuff that was uh, never released before, being issued for the first time. Ooh. It's going to be in a double red LP. and uh, You can't miss. You really Miles can't. Davis. Of course, <laughs> go ahead and get yourself the little dogfish head Miles Davis Bitches Brew. To go along with your Oh, is that this brew. year's? That's this year's. Uh... No, it's. I mean, not as far as I know, but they did do a bitches brew and like one of those, uh, like thirty-two ounce sort of like wax, champagne bottles or whatever. Bottles, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was pretty fucking good, honestly. That's dope. Yeah, and shout out to Dogfish Head Brews, who always uh, is a sponsor of Record Store Day and puts out an exclusive brew. We had the Flaming Lips beer, mm -hmm. uh, Dragons and Yum Yums. Have you yeah. seen that seven inch resale value though? Well, that's crazy. I have not. With no, the which beer, one? The, with the beer pressed inside. Oh, of the record. I just oh. learned about this. Yeah, <clears throat> it's gnarly. Oh, Coming you, next, Use Tuesday. I'm sorry, you are correct. I totally uh, spaced on this. But what you talked about, uh, Post Malone's Hollywood Bleeding, you're right, that is coming out on Record Store Day uh, on a double LP. Did I do more homework on this than you guys? Come on, man. And it is yeah, going <laughs> to... Uh, but it is what's going to be called an RSD first. First. Which is, of course, a piece that gets put out on Record Store Day first. And uh, usually it's got some kind of exclusive, you know, of, of color variant or something like that. Something to make it uh, different from the one that they'll be releasing later in the year. So it's just a chance to get a, a cool version of something that you can uh, expect to see, you know, later in the future. 
I promise I'll try to get you one, Courtney. I'll try. All right, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk records in the last year without mentioning Billie Eilish, of course. Mm-hmm. Hot that seat. shit is huge. Huge. Uh, big numbers for the industry just on that last record alone. Mm-hmm. What'd she win? Something like five, five Grammys. Grammys. Yeah. It's crazy. It's nuts. And uh, so recently she went and did a live at Third Man Records session mm-hmm. in the Blue Room there. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course the copies they made there were only available in Nashville and Detroit. Gone. Crazy money online. So here for Record Store Day, we've got Billie Eilish live at Third Man being pressed on opaque blue vinyl and it includes an exclusive poster from the session. Mm. Oh, cool. So, even if you don't care, I'm going to go with your teenage children care you know, just for and the think fact. about oh, yeah. them, too. She's oh, so yeah. big. I feel like I need to give her a deep dive. I, you know, I've only, I feel like I've only ever heard that like one big song of which I'm not even entirely sure the name of. Wearing Bad guy. Cologne. That Duh. One. So forget it. All I can I just sound like such an old man. I just man picture like, you know, like that breathy. We are not the voice people who have has. a conversation about Billie Eilish. <laughs> but and yet, here but we I respect are. you. <laughs> Let's go call Julia. She's really she can help us out. Uh, something that's coming out uh, that is uh, a JB pick for sure. One that I have been God, I've been waiting for this one. This is a, like a, a JB White Whale record. White Whale, old dirty a bastard. White what? No, no. Do you say poultry guess? Old dirty bastard. Oh. <laughs> I heard poultry gasm. Wasn't that the name of a horror movie? That Probably. We got? <laughs> I'm gonna put a pin in that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nativity in Black: The Tribute to Black Sabbath. This was a comp that came out uh, I, I, in 1994. I was in high school, and it's just every band that I fucking loved so much covering Black Sabbath songs. That's it's dope. Megadeth, White Zombie, Biohazard, Sepultura, Corrosion of Conformity, Faith No More, Ugly Kid Joe, Typo Negative, Al Jurgensen of Ministry. Uh, uh, so many fucking people are on this. Even Ozzy's on it. Wow. And he makes a feature on his own record? Yeah. His own, he, does he cover one of his own songs? He's also on the second one. Is it technically a cover? I'm sure he got paid. That's all that matters. <laughs> he got paid twice. Sick. I spun this so much in high school. I loved this comp, and I'm so excited to see this one out uh, it, it finally on a vinyl. A good cover record goes a long way. If the stars align on it, you know? like Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. You get a great lineup, and this yeah. was one of those ones that is great. And even Volume 2, I assume, will be coming at some point in the future. Volume 2 is also fucking awesome. It has like Pantera and Primus and a bunch uh, of other really we're rad bands. About so... Uh, in fact, it says here, Megadeth won a Grammy for their cover of Paranoid. Wow. It's going to be on colored vinyl. There's going to be 2,000 copies released uh, exclusive to Records Store Day. 2,000 colored copies. Mm. Sick. And that's an RSD exclusive. Not an RSD first. Just felt like I should throw that in. Uh, let's talk regional release, a.k.a. limited run. They call it limited run regional releases. I think there's a misnomer there because just because it's quote unquote a regional release doesn't mean it's specific to a region. Anybody can order it. It's just that they expect it to have more draw draw on it. Like UGK last year, I remember being one. I was like, okay, this is gonna be big in Texas because it's UGK. Or whatever. Yeah. But uh, so on the limited run release this year is a little soundtrack action. I'm excited about. Mm. It's uh, the soundtrack to Sinek Dosh, New York. Not the soundtrack I thought you were going to pick. Not going to lie. Well, no idea what that is, but... Uh, it's a movie starring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a Charlie Kaufman movie. So if mm-hmm. you like Charlie Kaufman, it's a great, incredibly depressing mindfuck. Um, Same guy who did The Dead Don't Die? No. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was uh, Jim Jarmusch. Right. Thank you. God. Uh, no, this is uh, Charlie Kaufman who did Adaptation and movies like that. Based on Schenectady. That's where the title of the movie comes from. Schenectady, yeah. New York. Old hometown. Hell yeah. Not actually anything in the movie is about Schenectady, <laughs> but there is a track on the soundtrack called Schenectady. Old Chenicatati. And uh, it's composed by John Bryan. Hello. Not hey. this John Bryan. The John Bryan. <laughs> the John Bryan. I like to think I'm the John Bryan. I'm not. I'm not. But uh, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Only 500 copies being made. Mm. Oh, that's exclusive. 
based on the reaction from YouTube, I'm like, well, maybe it's the right number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. It's going to crush in Schenectady. <laughs> yeah. If only there was, was a record that, store a, um, there. Place Between the Pines about Schenectady, Rotterdam area. A film there, yeah. Yeah. Place was, that was a good movie. Can I talk about the Notorious B.I.G. set? Yeah. Sure. I'm crazy excited about this Notorious B.I.G. Um, I had no idea. I was running through the list, and I, of course, you know, I, I see a Notorious, and I got all excited anyway. I've got um, Ready to Die is like the rap, you know, dark side of the moon to me. But uh, this looks like a collection of his earliest stuff in a nine LP box set. And I didn't see the nine LP until I just started this (laughs) podcast. (laughs) And I was like, damn, that is a lot of records. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, this thing is probably going to be a hot commodity. How many? It's 2,000? Uh, yeah, they're pressing 2,000 2, copies. Thing, I can see this thing being on par with that cake box that I talk so much often about, like, value-wise. Um, I don't know anybody Yeah, I think people one. are... I've already heard some comments that people are afraid of the p- price point on this. What is it, 500 <clears throat> No, actually, it's... Uh, I don't want to be exact because I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say... It's in like the hundred and fifty dollar range. That's not bad. For a nine, nine LP box right, set. Right. So nine LP. I set. mean, that's nine singles. That'd it's be got a bummer. But. Yeah. <laughs> Biggie's four albums: Ready to Die, which is a two LP; Born Again, which is a three LP; yeah. Life After Death, two LP. I just decided I'm closing my store to come get this thing. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want this. <laughs> I want this. So and bad. Junior Mafia's Conspiracy, two LP. I need this. All so together, bad. pressed on clear vinyl and housed in a cool set. The artwork looks pretty sweet, it's actually. Super Super yeah. cool. Um, if you are a Notorious fan, this is your holy grail, apparently. Yeah. Includes um, biographical liner notes from veteran hip-hop journalist and author Cassie, Kathy Iandoli, mm-hmm. and artwork by Grammy-winning artist Masaki Kaoki. Koi, koiki. Definitely. Uh, I don't, know. Don't, hold me, don't hold me to the Japanese part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just seems like a super cool piece if you're into New York rap. Yeah. Yeah. I was after I, uh, I I had sold a few of my records to uh, a local record store, <laughs> and I've been trying to buy some of them back, but they're all gone already. So uh, yeah, that'll I, get you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going back through my collection. I'm looking at all I've got left, and it's literally just New York rappers. It's like Wu Tang, Nas, <laughs> Notorious B.I.G., a um, bunch of other, you know. You, you know, you raise a funny thing. I so I'm a Saturday Night Live fan. Hell yeah! And I watch it every week, which is always surprising. Like you do bring up Saturday Night Live fairly regularly, but I didn't realize how uh, religious you were with it. Uh, I, I I enjoy the show. I I watch it, and I always think about how like because I'm from New York, I feel like there's like a special connection there, and especially like there's so many jokes that are like if you're not from New York. Like it's not fucking funny, yeah, and I, I always like wonder how it's like a no holds barred kind of place, you know. Right. So you can get away with stuff like what they do, but well, more like you know when they make jokes like about LaGuardia Airport, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I'm always like, how does the you rest only of the really country get it if you go to LaGuardia on yeah. a regular basis? You how know? does Minnesota feel about these jokes? You know, like do, do, is the viewership as strong out there? I don't like, get it. do you? Get it? I don't get it. Yeah, like in LA, do they fucking give a fuck about Saturday Night Live at yeah. all? They don't care about LaGuardia because they fly into JFK. There you go. <laughs> So, Nork. Fly to Nork. I fucking, I hate LaGuardia. <laughs> <laughs> so does SNL. I was just there last week, and it actually was a little, like, the terminal I left from, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, I feel like I'm in civilization again. But then when I got back, my plane literally didn't even have a, like, one of those air gates that I was going to say, yeah, you plane. didn't even get the gate, did you? No. <laughs> get out. I had to get like, out. You like got to grab savage. your bag from on the spot, and you're like, no, here, you got to yeah. take this now with you. And then I had to walk, like, across the tarmac and then up a set of stairs into the air bridge to go into the terminal. Yeah. And I was back into one of the terminals they haven't renovated yet. I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to do that. Really? I've, I've Just got, be on the tarmac? Yeah, I've that. gotten, uh, I've, one time in my life, it was actually when I went to Italy, 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 Italy. Uh, with with so Jenny right a few now. months back. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, glad I went when I went. Uh, but it, to fly out, we actually had we took one of those cool like tiny buses and they drove us out across the tarmac. We had to go up the little stairs into the plane. And I was like, "This is the best part of this whole fucking trip." Is this right here? I've always wanted to do this since I was a kid. I remember so, landing at Albany Airport as a kid, like coming to visit my grandparents, and. Um, Having to do that, like you had to walk down the plane and across the tarmac into the building. I presume it's not like that at all anymore. <laughs> but. No, they got I think like three terminals. Yeah, and it's, like, it's an international airport yeah, now because they can go to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Te- 
technicality. No way. Nah, that's all I got. Um, <laughs> speaking of box sets, another one to be excited oh, about yeah. is uh, yeah. the John Prine box set. Definitely. The Atlantic albums. Again, not where I thought you were going. Where did you think I was going? I thought you were going to talk about the Clutch Obelisk box set. Oh, well, the, now you're blowing the the load. I'm just saying that's where I thought you were going. <laughs> I'm going to John Prine. Yeah. The you know the beautiful uh, poetic soul that yeah, is I John Prine. I actually have a, a few customers that are big John Prine fans. So over the past couple of years, I've listened to a lot. Of yeah, John you like Prine. you like Bob Dylan. Do you like Neil Young? Yeah, you can you thank can, John Prine. You're gonna love John Prine. Yeah. Um, so it's a four LP set. It's got the self titled John Prine, Sweet Revenge, Diamonds in the Rough, and Common Sense. Uh, pretty much all of those are out of print. They've done a couple of like the Rocktober or Start Your Year Off Right reissues of the self titled, but man, this I think this is gonna be pretty big. Again, only two thousand copies. Yeah, two thousand mm-hmm. pressed. Get in mm-hmm. line. Uh here's one that I don't know anything about. This is really the Drew Meehand pick of Record Store Day. Uh there are gonna be two releases from Odd Future. Mm. Uh, the one that I'm looking at in front of me here is called The Of Tape, Volume 2, Neon Purple. Uh, this is an RSD exclusive. It's a 2LP, only 1,400 copies pressed. But of course, The Of Tape, Volume 2, is the 2012 debut studio album from Left Field Hip Hop Collective Odd Future, who of course feature such Grammy winners as Tyler the Creator, Frank Ocean, Earl Sweatshirt, and then a whole bunch of other people, including Haji Beats, Domo Genesis, Mike G, The Internet, Taco, Jasper Dolphin, Left Brain, L Boy, Little Boy, Earl Sweatshirt, Big Toy, and Car Bomb. Earl Sweatshirt's worth two shout outs. I like that. Guess what? I made up four of those people. <laughs> <laughs> no one would have knew. Just, Taco was not made up, though. I know that Taco's was Taco's not made up. I know correct. That was <laughs> um, Tyler, the creator's also got some instrumentals on here, too, which seemed pretty cool. I mean, mm-hmm. Cherry Bomb was a good record. Yeah, first time officially on vinyl is yeah. Cherry Bomb, and then also the instrumentals. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, yeah, Odd Future. It's not my kind of rap, but it's like uh, maybe like next-gen Eminem, some sort of weird, you know, side genre of rap. Mm-hmm. The new, the evolution of rap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in like the, right, in like the, transition phase you know I wouldn't necessarily odd features like internet rappers by any means Earl Sweatshirt Todd the Creator they all have great records There's lit- the internet is on it yeah <laughs> I don't know much about it I'm sorry yeah. I should have yeah. jumped in uh, sorry <laughs> I, I don't either you guys keep bringing up hip hop titles and I keep going oh look at this weird soundtrack I want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> alright how's about this we'll, we'll get to the fucking this is the Poughkeepsie winner right here okay Skid Row, yeah. slave to the fucking grind. Yeah. All right? Looking at you, Byron. <laughs> Looking at all of Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Let's be real, all right? This is, of course... Uh, the Chance cover version is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 2LP from Run Out Groove, Friends of the Store. Mm-hmm. This is the uncensored version of the album, but it's on solid red 180-gram double vinyl. 2,500 copies worldwide. It has four bonus tracks and is presented in a deluxe tip-on style gatefold jacket with an insert. If you're from Poughkeepsie, you fucking love this album, Tig Man. So get in here (laughs) and buy this thing, all right? I I know. I don't even have to to say it. He knows. He's like, shots received. His 80s metal sense is going off right now, hearing me say this out loud. Is there a new Skid Row record coming out? Guys, you hear that? My Sebastian Bach sense is going off. I got to go get in line right now. (laughs) I wanted to know what the uncensored part was. Hmm. So I guess the original version ended up removing Get the Fuck Out. Off of the record. Well, I'm glad it's here. That's all. Finally. 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 And I don't know if you said this because I was busy looking, but the Record Store Day version has four bonus tracks that weren't originally on the album. I did say that. Okay. Glad we covered that. That's pretty cool. A lot of good, uh, a couple good Rolling Stones records coming out. Uh, One of my favorites, Let It Bleed. Yeah. Limited Collector's Edition. Uh, Something you might want to get your hands on. I used to have a pretty cool clear copy of this, but I think she's gone. Um, But I went out of my way to collect a lot of. Rolling Stones in the day, and this is a must. Uh, only 500 copies, only too. 900 copies. 900. Uh, uh, each, each one is unique. Each copy is handcrafted on the press with unique colors on top of another, so each one is going to be a little different. 
and uh, they're hand numbered with a certificate of authenticity. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good list this year. It is a good list. Stacked. So I'm excited Mm -hmm. again about uh, (laughs) another soundtrack. I'm turning into Birdo and Brian here apparently, but the Virgin Suicide soundtrack is coming out. Yes. Love that movie. Sofia Coppola's first film. Great soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Where I got my love of Yellow Strange Magic from. Are are you an Air fan? I'm a bit of an Air fan. I don't know the canon. I'm also a little bit of an Air fan. I feel like they wrote one of the greatest songs that has ever been written. For the movie. No, no. Oh, just not period. For yeah, period. Just and it is. I'm terrible at accents, and it's a French title. <laughs> Here so we I'm go. Just, I'm just Here gonna butcher go. it. Oh crap! Uh, it's called La Femme d'Argent. La Femme d'Argent. And if you've never heard this song, it is literally one of the D'Argent. best songs D'Argent. ever written, hands down. But this soundtrack is great. I I spun this before I even knew what soundtracks were. Yeah. So um, Air did write one, like they wrote a track just for the movie, which is included on the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought they did the. Uh, I thought they were the the entire soundtrack. Yeah, I thought they they did. Oh, the they score did the instead. score. Sorry, they did the whole score to the movie. Okay, to Virgin Suicides. So this is the soundtrack. This is the soundtrack. Yeah. So you got Steely Dan, Todd Rundgren, Boston Hart, Al Green, Ten CC, Sticks, Bangers, all like those. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sort of that era radio. It's like my MySpace top eight right here. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of MySpace top eight, Ooh. Britney Spears wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> but she does have a cool remix album coming out. Um, you know, if you're in the fan of your favorite songs, but not the original, maybe something you want to pick up. Oops, I did it again. Oops, something you hopefully don't have to say too often. <laughs> but uh, you know, sometimes you will. Depends on the circumstance. And it's I think. fine. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you were like, I won the lottery again. Oops, <laughs> I did it again. I wouldn't say oops, but fuck yeah. Uh, that's, so, uh, that's the one time when it's <laughs> totally okay, totally warranted. <laughs> um, not too limited, so you don't have to you know get in line for this guy. But maybe something you want to add on there, if your favorite thing was already sold out, you say, yeah, I'll take the Britney Spears remixes. Sure, you know, I was telling these guys really. There's a few of my favorite. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be on this, but a few of my favorite remixes of uh, electronic versions are Britney Spears songs. So, hmm. you know, Toxic. It's a, it's a and a uh, fun fact, uh, maybe Baby One More Time was one of the first albums I ever bought. But hey, you know, just, what's your next favorite record on Record Store Day list, Justin? Uh, how about? <laughs> well, here, I'll even interject. Uh, talking about something you were saying, uh, one that mm, mm, I don't like the phrasing of saying it's not one to wait in line for, but uh, this is one that I'm interested in for one fucking song, purely. And... Don't sleep on this one. Space Hogs Resident Alien Ooh. is going to be out on Record Store Day, and it has the song In the Meantime. And I can honestly say, I don't know if I've ever heard another Space Hog song. <laughs> I can say that with reasonable confidence. But that fucking song is so goddamn good that, like, this is the one that, like, fuck, if you're just going to throw a couple of records in, just do it, man. Okay. You, won't, you won't regret it. Uh, 1350 copies. It's an RSD exclusive. Uh, it's the double LP debut of this mid nineties British glam album that was recorded right here in Bearsville, New York. By Todd is Rundgren. that outside Woodstock? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Cool. But yeah, in the meantime, amazing song. Worth it just for that alone. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> Uh, I'm always a sucker for a comedy piece, and I'm glad to see there's one back in. I feel like there's usually one every record store day. And uh, this year we got Lenny Bruce. Lenny yes. Bruce is out again. Yes. So this is, a, I guess, a rare recording of Lenny Bruce that's been authorized by his daughter. And I guess it was only ever sold in clubs by Lenny himself, and it's like never wow. been reissued. So pretty cool piece. They're doing 1,000 copies. It's like cool the piece. OG of outlaw comedy. Yeah, seriously. It's like, it's like funny to me to see a Lenny Bruce piece. He was a game changer Saturday. when he came yeah. out, you know? Um, I would probably go nuts for a Mitch Hedberg comedy piece. Mm. That's just me. But Lenny Bruce. I can't believe they haven't actually reissued the stuff from the box set yet, like as individuals. I know. They have like a new piece. Do, do You Believe in Gosh, I think. Yeah. Something that came out after. It's okay. 
<laughs> Can we talk about that Coolio album real quick, though? Goddamn. <laughs> you mean friend of the store, Coolio? Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Really? For those of you that don't know, <laughs> years ago, uh, we tweeted out, I wonder if Clueless was such a big movie. We were questioning if the music was what made the movie a cult classic. Yeah. And we like tagged all the artists yeah. on the soundtrack. And one of them was Coolio. And within like 20 minutes, he tweeted back, didn't hurt. <laughs> um, I What was it? Um, Dangerous Minds. You remember that movie? I think Gangster's Paradise was the intro was it? song to it. It was. I just remember this album being like iconic. My sister had it, and I was jealous because I was too young to get a parental mm. advisory record. <laughs> and I was like, I need this record. This is the but one. This is the opportunity to get this record. Paradise. Right here. Yep. yep. Uh, only double LP. Only fifteen hundred copies. copies. It's the twenty fifth anniversary this year. Damn. It was twenty five years ago. You Damn. weren't allowed that. <laughs> I was seven. Out <laughs> <laughs> of the fucking Coolio record. <laughs> Um, if you guys are Bernie fans, maybe you saw these guys at the end of his uh, campaign trail. The Strokes are putting out um, a cassette, uh, which I mm-hmm. usually wouldn't be excited about, but I've got a 99 Audi, which has a tape deck in it. So I've been uh, buying random cassettes from Dark Side Records, among other uh, media formats, video games, LPs, CDs. We got what you need. Nicely done. They have what you need. I don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> As of right now, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Strokes have uh, maybe is it a new record from them? What they do what? have that new album coming out. I want to say April, yeah. early April, and yeah. it is that is the album is the new abnormal. That is, is it, their right? new album. Oh, okay, it's the cassette version of the album. Yeah, I didn't actually. Cassette. Yeah. I didn't realize it was a cassette when I saw it on the list. I picked mm. up a Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers cassette from Record Store Day from here uh, back in the day, and uh, I'm gonna burn that thing out. There's sure. been some great cassettes, like they mm-hmm. did the Guardians cassette one yeah. year. Uh, that Metallica thing on cassette was it an EP or something like that. Do you find it's a harder format to maintain for some reason, like as a listener or as a as a store? store? Uh, the listener, I guess. I think you got to be committed to the cassette. Yeah, I don't know. And it's just, a, it's a select it's something group like of it's people. even. You thought a vinyl was delicate? No, this cassette. It just take one bad experience. Yeah. And it's over. I don't know. I feel like uh, as a uh, former van owner that only had a cassette player <laughs> in my van, and we would take it, you know, for two weeks at a time mm-hmm. touring across the country. Uh, I really enjoyed having cassettes. Like yeah. it made for a very different experience. Like you know, we had a, an adapter so you could plug your phone sure. in. Sure. Oh, and that stream was the best adapter though. But mm-hmm. it was like something about sitting through an Full album. Length. That's what yeah. I'm and, that's, and that's why I listen to vinyls, man. Right. And in fact, I remember we um, we had sort of like just uh, at Darkside. Like I, I was very new at Darkside, and, and we had like just sort of decided like to go in on cassettes and to like to start like really like selling them and go after them and, mm-hmm. and you know show them some love and I I bought a, a cassette case and I stocked the whole thing with cassettes and, I remember that honestly yeah and it made like a really wonderful like driving experience where it, it was some of the rare time where you know you, you, it's so crazy and and you're driving you're on the road and and you're you know away from your friends or whatever and you know to play an album but to like make that dedicated choice to say like no no we're gonna do this no skipping no all the way through no fighting six maybe seven cassettes now or something like that right but it's a pretty i try to keep a pretty diverse collection excuse me (laughs) and um yeah i've got like i've got uh the shins wu-tang uh an incubus uh morning view copy just like random stuff mm-hmm. that I have no problem just putting in and listening to the whole thing, yeah. you know. And I even have a bunch of uh, a bunch of local friends who are in bands who put out cassettes, right. and like half of my cassette collection is just those, which is just sort of just sort of nice to to have, you know. Yeah. I enjoy having something kind of unique. So, Strokes, consider it. There you go. Put it on your list. All right, so uh, one more here for me that I'm going to look at. This one is definitely the Julia Franklin Delano Roosevelt pick of the list. Uh, honey, yeah, they're, they're putting out their uh, album. Yes, 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 yes. No, yes. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's that many yeses. Five yeses specifically. Uh, they're putting it out. It's their 2019 debut on vinyl for the first time. It's going to be on translucent blue vinyl. Uh, it is an RSD regional focus limited run release, as we talked about before. 
It's an up-and-coming band who just obviously put out their debut in 2019. It's great to see new bands also putting out things for Record Store Day. So it's Record Store Day doesn't just include reissues of classics. There's you know a lot of new bands who are supporting indie record stores and supporting what we're doing. And we appreciate all of you who do that. Uh, I've been pretty excited about this August Burns Red 7-inch. Uh, they were a big band. When I, when I was a band in a band in high school, these guys came out and destroyed everything. And we were like, well, we can't fucking do this now because these guys <laughs> are here and they're way better than us. Uh, they were 18 when they made their first record, and it dominated. Thrill Seeker, if you've ever heard it, uh, changed like metalcore. They're like, oh, we're just not going to do choruses anymore. We're just going to do straight, everything's new, each bar. So they've got a new uh, song album coming out, so they're doing mm-hmm. like a seven-inch single release. I think it's called Bones, on like an opaque, of course, like translucent, uh, limited vinyl single. So uh, anything that they have is always really hard to get after it comes out. So if you are into this band or the genre, maybe something you would definitely want to grab. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why it's just August that burns red, because <laughs> it's hot. It's hot, but, you know, <laughs> July's a bitch, too. That's your band. You can start. <laughs> July's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tour. That's yeah. a tour you can set up real easy right there. I always thought like a days of the week tour would be good with like Thursday, taking back Sunday. Um, How has that not guy, happened? That should have happened. Days Seriously. of the new. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> you know. God, I got to pick one more. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. There's so much good stuff. You're not wrong. I can't believe you didn't even mention Primus. There's so yeah, many great things on I this list. This list was stacked. There are the TLC single, the picture disc with waterfalls. There's pieces from the Allman Brothers. There's two Black Crows reissues. It looks like another Grateful Dead live setup. Buffalo so. 77. One of one of our Deadheads. I told him about it, and he goes, yeah. "Oh, that's a good show." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "But do you remember, you know? man?" You know, there, uh, there's a Chon piece. There's a Dr. John Eminem seven inch Sun Ra. Uh, the Flesh Tones putting out two. Well, I guess it's the same thing on the LP and CD, but a My Chemical Romance LP just got back together. I don't. Is that a new album? The Murder Scene. I don't know this one. Kelly Finnegan on Coal Mine. Mm-hmm. There's Gorillas D sides and G sides. Damn G sides. Yeah, that's gangster. Uh, who could forget all three of the Austin Powers soundtracks? No way. <laughs> Fucking yes. for real. Yeah, that's because it is shit, Austin. <laughs> These kind of things are my bag, baby. <laughs> That's not mine. Allow myself to introduce <laughs> myself. Uh, the Grave Diggers. There's another Green Jelly piece. They're triple live. Yeah, it was live one, right? Mm-hmm. For those of you who might have been looking for it back on Black Friday, the weekend piece is actually coming out now. They got bumped from Black Friday for production issues, mm. but here it comes. Warren Zevon. Clipping, Frank Zappa, Bob Marley, Wild Chapatulas, because I always wanted to say Chapatulas. <laughs> the Game just got a new record, new drop. Uh, the Menzingers. Oh, oh, yeah, there's a Menzinger 7-inch, right? Yeah. I, or No, no, it's not a 7-inch, it's their first record, Chamberlain Waits. Oh, yeah. That is correct. You mentioned earlier the Clutch box set, mm-hmm. which I believe is a 16 LP box set. Oh, check this out. Felt 3. That is a great record right there as well. Uh, Slug and Murs uh, and ASAP Rock. Three Is that uh, Felt? Felt, yeah. That's cool. Um, That's cool. I will felt say. Felt 3, a tribute to uh, Rosie Perez, is uh, the 10 year anniversary. Great record. Felt 1 and 3 are probably my favorite. Two's pretty good too, but the felt record that came out for records today, like a year or two ago, yeah, still sitting on that slug thing. is um, atmosphere, amazing, creative Midwestern rap. Yeah, that whole Midwest scene yeah. that like blew up. Rhyme the, Sayers, all yeah. those dudes. Can't forget Pink Floyd, uh, the Scatolites, Magnum, Soul Asylum, Can Heat, John Lee Hooker. I'm a huge Can Heat fan for some reason. Yeah. Oh no no country. There's the. Oh, <laughs> There's the U2 piece, which uh, I noticed... It's already downloaded on your phone. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, which I noticed was put on Instagram before the list was out, and I was wondering if someone accidentally posted it on their Instagram. The artists are free to do that. They do it sometimes. Refused. um, Oh, actually, I did some homework on this Refused piece. Mm. They did a live session of some of their new songs, and it's the recording of that session from the BBC... um, I got to go see them on their reunion tour after what, like a 15-year hiatus, 10-year mm-hmm. hiatus, and blew my mind. 
Mm-hmm. Am I in love with their most recent work? No, but I think a, a great band, and if they're doing some of their older stuff, maybe on that collection, it'd be pretty sweet. Sure. There's a Dio pick disc for Drew Smearden. A couple uh, Judas Priest coming out. Fleetwood Maxi alternate rumors. That's going to be a monster. That's yeah. Cool. And if you haven't heard the new Mandy Moore... <laughs> I'm just saying. It's so Fleetwood Mac. Holy shit. If you love Fleetwood Mac, seriously give the new Mandy Moore a spin. Wow. I am not. Like not we're not even kidding. Like, yes. it's. Aaron put it on this morning, and I was like, it still tricks me every time. That yeah. He, I mean, someone's got to take pick up where Stevie Nicks left off. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Ace Freely fans, don't let me down this time around, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> they would but never. Kipsy. How dare them? Uh. For you jazzercisers, we've got a mm-hmm. couple of Dexter mm-hmm. Gordon pieces coming out. Those are going to kill. Of course, Hootie and the Blowfish you know, live at the That's a around the Hootie and the Blowfish album. That's actually pretty... <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind listening to a live Hootie album. That sounds pretty yeah. cool. In, Go ahead. Infectious Grooves, putting out Take You on a Ride. For you suicidal fans. Got a Who album coming out. Maybe it looks like a compilation. Odds and Sods. Yep, that would hmm. be an older one. Hmm. Not too limited, but... Biffy you know. Clyro, and remember that band? I do wow. remember that yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I was trying to remember a song that I, I remember listening to from them, but I couldn't put a finger on it. Uh, excited for this one. The Gary Clark Jr. Pearl Cadillac 10-inch. Mm. Fucking love that guy. God, that's a pretty sexy piece of vinyl right there. It is. It's like a ghost. Featuring Andre Day. Uh, the one I really wanted to talk about, you mentioned, but uh, particularly stoked for the Dr. John Remedies that's coming out. It's going to be on Mardi Gras colored splatter vinyl. Already badass. Two, it's Dr. John, so you know it's fucking badass. Oh. Mm. And uh, it's got a track in it called Chippy Chippy. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, so, Chip. And the first track, Loop Guru. Loop-a-roo. It's fucking oh god! It's so he got rid of his longtime producer and he hired a rock producer for the first time to make the album. Hmm. It was right after he got out of prison because he was busted for buying some weed on the streets of New Orleans or something like that. Wow. And so this B side of the album is one track called Angola Anthem, and it's named after the Louisiana prison, very notorious Angola State Penitentiary. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess there's a song that a friend of his in the joint uh, told him nobody's ever cut this track before, and it's about Angola. So he got out, records the track, and it's the entire second side. Wow. I love shit like that. That's crazy. You know what we missed out on? Dr. John doing ASMR videos. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I quite go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is me going to light the cigarette? <laughs> Let's do some ASMR exactly from like, you know, chain smokers who've been smoking for 50 years. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just got a fresh carton here and uh, I heard you guys want to hear me smoke it. So It's for people who quit smoking. That's our fucking YouTube channel. Oh, dibs. Okay, done. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> so that's just a sample of some of the things that are coming out uh, for Record Store Day. That's, of course, April 18th here at Darkside Records or at your local, friendly, neighborhood, independent record store. Don't give in to the bullshit. Don't buy from the eBay flippers. No. They're uh, assholes. You gotta work for it. You know what? If you miss out on a piece, we'll... Well, like, I don't know how other stores do it, but we get your name. Like, if there's something that we sell out of before you make it in, we'll take your name and number, and we'll do our best to get it for you. We look at lists from distributors that are quote-unquote leftovers... After uh, come Monday, like because sometimes distributors hold things back a little bit in case there's shipping errors or damages. Mm-hmm. Then come Monday, they release all that stuff. We can try to get it. We're friends with stores all over the country, and what might have been big here may not have been big in say Minnesota. So we'll swap. Like you know, we, we got something left that they need. They got something left that we need. We trade all around. Don't give into that eBay bullshit. Mm-hmm. And we here proactively get rid of those flip fucks. Like, I can honestly say that usually the first 20 people in line are people that we know and are regulars here all year long. And like, What's up with Rose? <laughs> <laughs> we did have an incident a couple years ago where some guy uh, 
who it never really dawned on me because he was a little bit annoying, but he was like one of those guys you want to talk. He always wants to talk. He's just like, shut the fuck up. You just want to walk away. It turns out he was flipping. So he got so bold at it that one year. Uh, somebody, somebody came in and told you and me that he was out in the parking lot taking cash from some other guy mm-hmm. in like a van. And we went out there and confronted him. And he was selling on, he was in the parking lot on his phone, posting them online. Nah. So you we know, said, fuck that and fuck you. You're never allowed to buy Record Store Day product again. We had the opportunity to do that and be that person, but we didn't. That year I was the first one in line. Right, because you're and good And I people. knew that resale was going to be $400. I didn't do it. We mm-hmm. let the person behind us get what they wanted. And because, you know, I just need one. I can't, we're here together, man. You know? Yeah. Shit, dude. Like, spread love. For real. Don't That's be what that it's about. It's about community yeah. and music lovers mm-hmm. and record stores. Mm-hmm. And like, I know it's cheesy and you always see it, but every day is record store day. This is just the birthday party. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like everybody has a birthday party once a year. Come on out, have some fun, have some beers, have some chicken, have some. Coffee. Coffee. Pet a puppy. Take a puppy home. Do a thing. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think there will be uh, adoptions happening. Right. Mm-hmm. See some live music. Just hang out. It's always great. It's it's honestly the like the funnest day of the whole year. Mm-hmm. And we touched on this last podcast, but uh, if you're worried about uh, distribution problems that are going on in the music industry... Fret not, my friends, because before Record Store Day, we will post our menu of available titles. That's right. Everything we will have, we post it online. If you're on our email list, you get it first. If you're not, sign up right now. DarksideRecords.com. And uh, so we'll post everything that we have so you can see the whole thing. You can come, hang out in line, meet some great local folks and spend a day here and celebrate everything that we love about independent record stores. I've been shopping here since day one. I wouldn't go anywhere else. Same. I've literally been shopping here since day one. I don't yeah. know about day yeah. one. I was close. I was close as I could get. We met JB the first, very first day we opened. Damn. Mm-hmm. I walked in one day, and JB is like, yo, do you like Grand Theft Auto? And I was like, <laughs> absolutely. Is this I'm a true story? Dead serious. <laughs> okay, go. I'm ready. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, it was corny and me, and you know, we didn't have kids or anything yet, so you're like, listen, uh, we're playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh, shit. I remember this. We're playing Grand Theft Auto trivia tonight. You want to play? Like, be a team. I'm like... Uh, yeah, I guess. And I think the only reason I still went home with the prize is because no one knew what kind of dog you had. And everyone wagered everything on the double Jeopardy and the final <laughs> Jeopardy shit. And I was like, no, nah, it's going to be ridiculous. I'm not going to wager shit. <laughs> and I was right. No one knew what kind of dog you had. I haven't thought about that in a long fucking time. <laughs> Holy shit, man. And that's how long I've been coming to the dark side. <laughs> I forgot who put that out. I'm looking right now. The bi- Mass Appeal. That's yeah. who it was. Yeah, Mass the Appeal. Makes sense. They yeah. gave us the, the whole cruel it had prize a, pack It had the ASAP Rock, uh, Rocky track on it, which was awesome. That was a good soundtrack. Oh, my God. Triple you see what this L. thing's going for now? A lot. Don't show them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember coming here and getting the, this Minus the Bear Acoustics album, which is like crazy hard to get for some reason. And it's a beautiful record. And I just remember seeing it in the rack and just being like, holy shit, there it is. Grab that thing. So support your independent record store because yeah, these guys right. know what's up. RSVP to the Facebook event for Record Store Day over uh, on our Facebook page. You can find all the information also on our website. Uh, come in. Let us know. Let, let's let's talk about what you're excited about. Come on in. We're happy to talk about it here in the store. Or head on into the Poughkeepsie Grind, 107 right. Main Street in Poughkeepsie. I love talking about records at the coffee shop as well. Exactly. Exactly. And... Uh, like we said, we open at 9 a.m. As per previous years, we anticipate a line, so come as early as you feel comfortable. Uh, the full Record Store Day rules are on our website, but um, just the sort of general ones are, as always, it is first come, first serve, no holds, no pre-orders. Important to mention, we do not do a free-for-all here. There's mm-hmm. no uh, pushing and shoving lines to get in the door. It's calm, it's orderly, it's friendly. Everything is set up behind the counter. We got it for you. We may have the list printed out. We're handing them out. Bring them in. You got time to look. Don't worry. We keep the shit moving. It's fun. It's easy. 
and no one's getting trampled. Mm-hmm. And if you're not even here for record store day stuff, if you're just here to shop regular stuff, or if someone is waiting in line and you just don't give a shit, we'll have other registers open. You can come in, like you were saying, have a beer, have some coffee, shop our regular inventory of records and great stuff that we'll have. Get a waffle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So come right on in here on record store day, April 18th. Can't wait. Indeed. It's going to be a long day. Less than six weeks away. Oy. Damn. I gotta start brewing the coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a six weeks brew. It's a it's a it's a, it's slow a long brew. soak. Yeah, <laughs> it's the slowest drip coffee. You can actually chew it. You bite. Yeah. It. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed, as always, subscribe. Say something nice to us. Go leave us a review. Uh, if you're not subscribing, I guess that's first and foremost. Subscribe to this shit. Uh, Head on over to uh, the iTunes store, the Google Play store, to Spotify, to wherever you get your podcast from. Leave us a nice review. Leave us some stars. I don't want to tell you how many to leave. Let's say 37. All of them. Mm -hmm. Max it out. I should just say all of them. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Leave us a a written review. Your reviews help us uh, expose ourselves to new listeners. And that you want us exposing ourselves. <laughs> you already did. I already exposed That's my how we started this whole situation. Yeah. I'm just telling you, Avatar for the podcast. <laughs> no, no. At least the, just the painting. A, a zoom, yeah. <laughs> George O'Keefe. Just, just George O'Keefe. <laughs> Can you just put a little bar and says JB's butt? <laughs> <laughs> He's doing really good for everyone. He's hey, sitting, thanks for having me, guys. He's I sitting appreciate on a donut. It. Thank you for being here. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. I sell donuts. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> not that kind. Of uh, if you bruise your tailbone, uh, you can use my trick that I talked about last episode using the neck pillow mm. or get a donut. Just do that thing. It really fucking helps. <laughs> like he's committed. Can speak from experience. It really helps. Uh, oh, also from last episode, oh, real God. quick. Uh, on the airplane. Yes. On the trip back, no one in the seat behind me. Full recline. Still did not recline. You motherfucker. I don't fucking want to recline in an airplane. Uh, He's anti-recline. Yeah. I'm so anti-recline. Uh, it shouldn't be an option. I'm a I'm a don't blind as recline. Long as everyone's doing it though. I mean, no, nah, this doesn't work. If out fucking for me. peer pressure, shit. If everybody reclined and you were the one person just up in the guy's face right here. <laughs> <laughs> but he all you he all you had to do seat. was this. And but it's so uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't like on the flight. I don't like a recline. Fair enough. You know, fuck this podcast. All All right, so that's this episode. Thank you so much for listening. As always, on behalf of Dark Side Records, I'm JB. I'm JJ. Pat McGuire. Thanks for listening. See you in the bins. See you at the coffee shop? Sure. Question mark? Okay. (laughs) And uh, wait, 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 wait. Meet you in the grind. There you go. Just leave to the grind. Uh, Oh, the grinder. Uh, I have to delete that account before. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a coffee app. Uh, before you go, don't turn the podcast off because guess what? We got something fun planned here. Hey, we sat down with the band Magic Giant a couple mm. days ago, and they were a lot of fun. They played in the store, presented by WRV. Thank you so much to everyone who came out, and we actually sat down and talked to them, and did a a pretty fucking fun interview. Cool. So I'm going to play that for you right now. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Here's our interview with Magic Giant. Hey, Internet. Welcome to the Dark Side Records podcast. Brought to you by the good folks at Dark Side Records, located at 611 Duchess Turnpike in Poughkeepsie. Or, of course, on the web at darksiderecords.com. Sorry. He's good. <laughs> he's, we got to stand. He's a listener. That's it. <laughs> Uh, we got a little special treat for you here uh, this episode. Um, we are sitting down with the band Magic Giant from Los Angeles. I just learned that. Uh, Hi. <laughs> hey, welcome. Thank yeah, you for being on the podcast. Thanks for having us. Uh, why don't you guys uh, I- introduce yourselves and I guess give our listeners uh, a little description of your band? I'm Austin. I sing mostly. Uh, I'm Zhang here. I play guitar mostly. I'm Zambricky. 
I play violin. Why are you doing an accent? That's not. It's like a, <laughs> there's a there's a famous Beatles Beatles interview where and he goes, "I'm John, I play the guitar." And Paul goes, "I'm Paul, yeah. I also play guitar." And he goes, "I'm Ringo, I play the drums." Yeah, yeah I've seen that. So I was just like, you know, just feeling that vibe. So I decided to just give myself an accent for a minute. All right, I'm Zhang and I play the guitar too. I'm Zambricky and I also play guitar. And I'm Austin and I I play sing. He plays the, he plays the, <laughs> the vocal chords. So my problem is I can't commit to an accent when I do an accent. It always okay. comes like break a accent. Break accent. Break accent. That was like, tiring. It's awesome. I, I play always. sing is a British expression. <laughs> but this is an American audience. But you got to change it, mate. So yeah, what's the description of our band? You know, um, live shows, I feel like we're, we try to keep it spontaneous. So we try to, you know, have maybe a general template, but we always want to... Kind of, you know, we're we're leaving our houses. We're coming out to share our music. We want people to have a an ex- a special experience, you know. And we want to also connect with the fans. So I feel like live, we're just trying to throw, you know, throw a good old like party, like a, with real instruments and good vibes and like big smiles. And yeah, if you dig into the records, like lyrical content is like our theme is triumph of the human will. That's our grand a theme. That's a theme. <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty overarching theme, right? guys. Like just <laughs> Good. putting a bullet on it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We like bullets. But yeah, we, we you know we try to write songs. We try to write <laughs> songs. That we t- we like try bullets. to write songs that tell a story, you know, and at, at least mean something. You, you know, you can't guarantee that your songs are going to mean something to other people, but you can at least make sure they mean something to you, and that that it's something that's powerful for us. So I think when we're writing, we try to try to write things that we're going to care about and things that we're not going to like be super bummed if we have to play them like 20 years from now you know we don't want to have any songs that are like ah shit that thing can I say shit on the podcast you can say whatever, whatever you want, you want. Yeah. <laughs> ah shit thank god <laughs> but yeah we're trying to write songs we believe in and, and you know we, we it's a very collaborative band you know we it's like you know we're, we're, we're all in it together so that's pretty cool and that's kind of like the concept of Magic Giant it's like this thing that's bigger than us individually go ahead <laughs> that was a power pause. Yeah, you can cut all that out. And just go, so, hey, we're magic. So sometimes, yeah. Perfect. Sometimes, sometimes when you talk about our music, we try to throw a power pause in there. So we like to have music that you know enriches ourselves and the hearts. No, but you need to say said. something like, a and then you'll is. never guess what he said next. Power pause. Power pause. Insert power pause. You can actually put some power pauses in here and post. Well, look, the best part about the power pause that it doesn't come across in the audio is that the power pause comes with all three of you very dramatically <laughs> staring <laughs> directly at me. Right. That's the power part of the pause. Really That's the nice yeah. power yeah. stare that like, goes with the power pause. Yes. What's nice uh, about this podcast is I can pick my nose and no one has any idea. Ah, dude, I'm right next to you. You flicked it at me. <laughs> What's not nice about this podcast is we're sitting next to each other. <laughs> we could all be in separate rooms. <laughs> Seeing each other, be, you know. I mean, we're in a post-corona world now, man. I got a, I got a booger current. in my face. Corona. We're post-current, yeah, future. We, b- uh, dur- we're in the mi- we're in the middle of the corona. Yeah, that was a corona right flick. Yeah, it has that name, man. Whew. Contained. I did see a thing that there was like, uh, in China, uh, people. I guess because of coronavirus, they they're telling people not to shake hands. So now there's like this new greeting where people they, they tap the the insides oh, of their that's feet, cool. yeah, okay. like a foot high five. And I was I like, really like that. I kind of just want to do that in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like low key better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's nice. Great. So uh, you guys uh, are on tour or just finishing up a tour? We're on tour and finishing up a tour. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> At the same time. Because we've been doing a, a 40, 40 city run um, that kind of, that run came to an end and then now we're in a little mini run. We're doing acoustic shows yeah. throughout upstate New York. And leading into Good Morning America. And then we're doing Good Morning America on the 6th. Friday. Then we go back. So then that's kind of like the end of the tour. Then we go back to California for like two and a half weeks. And then we start our spring tour. This is the end of the winter tour. Then we start the spring tour. Yeah. Uh, and you don't often. really stop. You just keep going, you know? Yeah. Keep, keep the keep engine going. on. Good. Keep trucking. Yeah, Good. you're never Good. there. You're never not there. You're always on the way. Coach Hawk said that. That's Austin's football coach. <laughs> but then I realized that. My after current football coach. Current past like, post, <laughs> coach, post <laughs> football coach. And I looked up on the internet, it turns out he kind of paraphrased, so, but I'm still going to give it to him, Coach Hawk. As long as it inspired you. That, yeah. That's, that's what matters. Uh, but yeah. I love it. You're never there. You're never not there. You're always in the way. I think people spend a, lot, a, long, a large part of their lives kind of thinking of what's going to be next. Yeah. And like, there's never, a, you know, you're always like, no matter what you're doing, you're always thinking about 
kind of what's next. So I think yeah, if to, I had this, or when I, I get this, there, I got the job, and when I get the better job, I get the better job. But when I stop working, yeah. you know, you almost roll right from like dream job to like dream retirement in like the same breath. You know, <laughs> so so we're out here on tour. So we're seeing, you know, I mean, things have been going. You know, the world's the world's crazy. This country's crazy, and we're on a tour bus, kind of passing through it. You know, so we're 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 seeing a lot of the ups and downs of the American countryside right now, mm-hmm. for sure. So th- this leg is is acoustic <laughs> dates. So w- what's a what's a full band setup for you? Or, so or so a like today, setup? T- today at the in store was acoustic. It's just the three of us, and um, and when we when we full is we have uh, our drummer comes, and then we have a bass player that we tour with, or you know, Zang plays the bass, so he was playing bass today. And uh, sometimes we'll just kind of all trade off and, and do the bass thing, but um, but yeah. Sometimes it's just, we have a guitarist as well, electric. Yeah, we sometimes we have horns that sit in. So like the show is like we're not you know we want to stay tr- in the, we want to stay true to the songs in the show, but in the show we kind of stretch out stretch out the material. It's like you don't have to have just we don't need it to sound exactly like a record because you can just like listen to the record and like close your eyes and pretend you're at a show. We want to make it seem like you know we want it to feel kind of like it's happening right now. You know, every show can be a little bit different. Uh, what's your relationship with record stores since uh, we are in a record store? I mean, we feel, I, I, you know, I used to go to, uh, to Grimey's in Nashville, mm-hmm. and they have a big record store day. Yeah. And one, one year I was there, and uh, Ava Brothers were playing in the parking lot. Nice. I had never seen it before, and it was just like, it was so good, it was crazy. And then, like people were hanging on the fences, and like the fences were getting knocked over and stuff. And it was, so it's, it's really cool that uh, the record stores are such a part of kind of the fabric of the energy for lit for people who really love music you know coming to a record store and that experience is like is a special thing you know reading i remember you know all my life going going to, going to record stores and you find records or now it's like you can just kind of grab like sometimes you'll just see like vinyl and cheap you know and you're like hmm you know hey so, so that's kind of my one of my latest joys with it is just getting the vinyl on the cheap on the, the road. treasure hunt yeah, the treasure hunt because there's stuff that that movie didn't cut, only got printed, didn't get reprinted. Yeah. There's stuff that's like kind of only exists on vinyl. Whereas once you get into CDs, I feel like a lot of that stuff's replicated. And are you buying? Are you just grabbing based on cover art? Like, just it looks good, or do you know the artist? So you yeah, just it's take usually it's usually I know or heard of the artist, and I'm trying to get something that is like not their album that I may already have. So it's like you know, just trying to get something that's just a little bit off the cuff. Deeper cuts. It's yeah. cool because we're touring around. Like we get to actually hunt through places that aren't often like go- gone through you know like this store mm-hmm. everyone probably knows about this store everyone walks into here so you may not find the good stuff on the whoa whoa store. whoa <laughs> no, they know. Oh, God, that's what i'm saying good they stuff, know what they're doing here is good i actually heard a rumor downstairs that y'all don't have a bad record that's what i'm saying building. like they know exactly what they're doing have you that's can you verify you go right now there's no yeah. bad records at this record store courtney clearly talked that's very <laughs> subjective very subjective it's objectively subjective. Because some guy, you know, some guy might come in and see that we have a ton of insane clown posse records and be like, "Holy fuck!" Yeah, it's true. This is the worst shit I've ever heard in my oh, life. Oh no! Ever. You know, and then but we'll ICP, have John Lewis come in. ICP is it. dope like, as f. Yeah, it's like legendary. It, yeah, so it, I mean, even the cover, I would get ICP just for the cover art. It's just like the crazy psychedelic weird art they have. You know, that might be one thing though. Like, you know, in the, like the heyday of of record labels and 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 you know pre streaming. You know, it took a it really it took a, a lot of people to get together to make a record. So there's maybe different uh, different levels of scrutiny, maybe for lack of a better term, or different levels of things that you went through to make it. But now that anybody can make a record, there's more music in general, more a lot of great music, and there's also probably way more terrible music because the barrier to entry in making it's a easy. record is like yeah. Garage Band <clears throat> and like. You don't have to learn how to write a song, then play that song well enough where someone wants you to record it. You can just kind of like right. write a song, your mom says it's dope, and then you record <laughs> it. And that's it. Yeah, the metric used to be you get hired by a bar and then get kicked out if you weren't any good. Exactly, right. yeah, and it was a thousand <laughs> beer soaked shows, right. and then like if your song sucked, no one clapped or whatever, and then you kind of knew, but without that kind of. Without that, just it's just a little bit different. We we try we write songs as we go on the road. A lot of times we'll have like our workshop song that like on this tour, this may or may, this may or may not ever come out, but we're gonna try to write this as we go. And uh, we've done it on this tour, and we absolutely I, I love the song that we've, that we've been playing. We've been kind of changing it based on crowd reaction. So now when we go record it, we actually have like a different arrangement, a different thing, which I think is pretty cool. So we try to do it since we're out. Yeah, jamming. I hear B sides. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> collecting. 
Yeah. Well, honestly, so, you know, when you work a B side enough, maybe it turns into an A side. Yeah. You know, enough at it. What was the What's the most famous B side? Uh, it's on the fucking Guardian soundtrack. Ooh. Brandy, you're a fine girl. Oh, of course. It was actually a B side. Wow. So I, who knows what the fucking A side was? Well, I actually wow. think I think uh, that first Police track, Roxanne, was I uh, maybe a B side, like to something else when it first came out. I heard a story just of like how the person who discovered it was just like on the other side of like something and right. then, you know, start playing it. And that was back when like one radio DJ could like Had make the power. a career. Yeah. A couple of cool. radio DJs, believe in you, really you really can make it. Yeah. And and that can be still true in a case like I think the Lumineers like uh, John yeah, Jonathan Richards, Richards uh, out in KXP. Seattle on KEXP was playing like the crap out of Ho Hey and then kind of made it a thing. But like that's the only time I've heard Such a rarity it. nowadays. It really is. Whole, most you know? radio is so just piped in and yeah pay to play yeah, yeah. And dial yeah yeah it's just part of a, it's part of a, a larger thing but i still think there are like i mean you know kxp john john is around so that's modern that's a modern example right. you know i just think you got to really be like you people have to really trust trust what you say as a dj you know where so it's just a little different or the, like the, even the new metric of radio would be like npr's tiny desk yeah like yeah. If you get tiny desk, like you're fucking right, you've made it or whatever. You know, you're yeah. indie royalty, basically. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna have a ton of eyes on it, whether they know know you or not. Yeah, right. yeah, totally. So your album, self-titled album, not in print on vinyl currently. It is. The self-titled he's talking about. Oh the oh the oh the EP the original. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah no. You know what it's going for online? No. One hundred fifty bucks or so. <laughs> so there's vinyl of it. You're saying? Yeah. Oh, is crazy. this news? Yeah. <laughs> you, heard, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. We are being pirated. <laughs> probably by, oh probably by Canadians. I bet you it's Canadians. Why Canadians? Because you, know, you think there's always the quiet ones. <laughs> it's on Washington Square, according to. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Well, great. You know, hey. Well, I hope that you know. I hope to make tens of dollars on. It. <laughs> uh, the one, uh, the most recent one I saw was autographed. Okay. So, in uh, theory, y'all yeah. signed it? Okay. You know, so I was, okay, some nights I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so Somebody funny. brings me something, you just sign, you know? Well, my leading question was, is there plans to repress since it's not currently oh. available? I mean, with the, you know, sh- sure, I, you know. I mean, a lot of those are like, we consider, like, almost demos now, like, is, is how we think of them. Yeah. Because totally. we All released right. a few They're of very these special, songs. but maybe you know who knows in ten years. So yeah, well, like, back yeah, 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 we might yeah. Be, it might be the first demo to ever be on vinyl. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, demo. most demos are a lot of demos are on vinyl. No, yeah, but your demo usually never comes out. That's the demo. Oh, sure. We just put our demo. Your demo always comes out. Like, <laughs> like give it ten or fifteen years. It the gets demo out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or like back. Even as just bonus tracks. Like sure. Original yeah. demo. Bob Dylan right. like basement tapes. The Beatles have a whole career based on it still. That's like, true. Oh, they have like yeah, not even anthology. demos. Yeah, it was anthology. Just all the studio yeah, like stuff. the white album was the last one that came out. There's three whole discs of outtakes and demos. Yeah, just oh, can we do that one that. again? Yeah. yeah, just everything like that. Just them talking in the studio. It's really cool. It's and it's like British. British I made the British accents makes it re- everything really charming. That's what's selling it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, can you pass me the tambourine? It's like, ah, sure. You know, like give me that tambourine, please. It's like, ugh, grating. But hey, that's true. Yeah. So. uh yeah, Basement Tapes, another great one, though, Bob yep. Dylan, which I think he did He did upstate. Yep, Woodstock. You know, he did it at Woodstock. And there's that, that old Crow Medicine Show uh, song, Wagon Wheel. Uh, actually, I think it came out of one of those tapes, and they actually just finished <laughs> one of his outtakes and then, like, turned it into a hit, and right. then that's how you get a Bob Dylan co-write. Because he's not, like, coming over right, with his right. guitar. Hey, Bob, how you doing? That's coming. You got any song ideas, Zembricky? Not coming by, but just, <laughs> you just find is you find Bob Dylan's unfinished songs and yeah. finish them. Genius, like uh, Mars Volta second record. Anybody know that one? Uh uh-uh. uh Francis the Mute. Okay, you know the Mars Volta. Of yeah. course. Okay, okay so the there? second album was the friend of theirs. Correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. The friend of theirs was living in a car and found somebody's diary that was in the car no way. and decided to start finishing the diary himself. And then it ended up in Cedric's hands, and they made Francis the Mute based on the things in that diary. Holy that's cool. shit, that's really cool. I always love that story. I love yeah. That. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. You got a diary we can read? No. Okay. Pretty boring. <laughs> you, got ta- you, got <laughs> I mean, you got tattoos, though. That's kind of like a diary. He's got way more tattoos than me. Yeah? <laughs> Less words. What's your, it's hard to read. What, uh, what's your favorite tattoo? My favorite tattoo? On your body. <laughs> is it your newest tattoo? <laughs> like on me specifically? <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, you know what I'm going to 
would say my favorite tattoo is is uh, I have a I have a quote on my side. I'll okay. show you. All right. It's very hairy. Right, he's pulling his pants down. I have a quote on my side. A noble, noble spirit begins the smallest man. That's nice. And a silver tongue. Ah, that's what that is. So oh, no. that is a quote uh, that him. I used to tell people uh, that if. You know, I was, I would like, I, I would show this to a girl on a date, and if she knew who the quote was, like, propose. That's it. That's, That's the, it. this is the marker. <laughs> Did it happen? It didn't happen. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, so the You're real, right. So now there is time, time. to get to my real question. That other question was a smokescreen. What's your least favorite tattoo? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I know body. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I know this one too, actually. Uh, I have a, a terrible tribal that I drew when I was 18, oh, but I then got oh, tattooed on wow. me, complete with Chinese character. Oh, yes. Yes. And what does a Chinese character mean? It's a mystery. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you Wait, should actually it means mystery ask, or it's actually a mystery dude, we don't know? No, I'm just not telling you. Okay. <laughs> ah, right. But you, you know, because I've actually heard stories of people who get like Chinese characters, but then the person who does it doesn't do it right, because it's actually really mm -hmm. hard to do Chinese mm -hmm. characters, and it means something else. Oh, so next no. time you go to a Chinese restaurant, just get, just take the temperature and get a couple people. Ask 10 Chinese <laughs> people. Yep. Who so knows? That, I would fucking love to do that. That's great. That, that'll be our first uh, Dark Side Records podcast on site. There you go. Uh, episode. Yeah, you just go, yeah, you just go, go to every Chinese restaurant in town. So, and to find your next ex wife, if she knows what that Chinese character is, then she's done. You run That's as it. fast That's as you it. can. No, wait, no, she, if she yeah, was my ex wife, I'd have to marry oh, her. Oh, sorry, marry her and then, then run. Like, immediately divorce That's the way her. he sees the world. He's just out looking for his ex wife. <laughs> Telling. Brody and Slim. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, so y uh, you just dropped a new single. It's so funny. Like, I was like, is this an interview about tattoos? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we just, you just I do. Love it. it just says what it is. Yeah, uh, we just drop the song. You guys are party. like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> no, this is great. Hey, this is fun. <laughs> I don't, we talked about a, a bunch of stuff. That's what we do. New single. Yeah, Disaster, disaster Party. Yeah, Disaster Party just came out, um, and we have a full album that should be following this summer. Not yet on vinyl. Not pressed yet. Plans? We like to press, press it, it first Absolutely. and then finish. Absolutely. Yeah. And CD? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. We have you, a CD. What, what, you, what you need? USB disc, man? <laughs> no, no. You would be surprised how many bands Are don't put out CD. fucking CDs yeah, anymore. Yeah, no, we have a CD and a vinyl of, of In the Wind. And we did an acoustic. We actually did an acoustic album of our debut album called In the Wind Acoustic. Also on CD. CD and vinyl. And pressed, and yeah. Vinyl. So we actually have yeah. both of those. And for every, actually when we tour, for every CD or album that we sell on the road or actually in stores as well, uh, we plant a tree. So that's really? one way that we like to give back. Yeah. Not us personally. We have well, it yeah, it's like a, a thing. <laughs> hey, yeah, right, right. I'm not, I'm not yeah. putting <laughs> seeds in the ground. I should, I guess. Although I'd like to. Yeah, I don't know. If we, if we plant, I'm not sure they would grow. But we partner with this organization called One Tree Planted, and they help us plant trees for every CD, album, vinyl sold. That's cool. And it's not yeah. one of those things where you think it's you think you're changing the world or you think that you're doing anything too crazy. It's just it's just a small thing you can do kind of it's along something. the way. Yeah. Exactly. It ends it's up becoming something. like a commitment you make that becomes like it happens in the background and then like over a long enough time it becomes meaningful. Yeah, we're planting thousands of trees, that's yeah. a forest, yeah. you know, that's a it's a big There's um I've only seen it done a few times, but there's some bands, you know, the download card that comes in your LP yeah. when you buy it. Yeah. The download card is actually a seed card, so once you get your download, you plan it. Oh my god! That's, really cool. that's, that's a great good. way to do it. That's a great way to do it. We do because we have like VIPs on this tour, and we give different bracelets, and those bracelets are seed bracelets. Oh, cool. The same way. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the, you know, speaking of trees and disaster party, um, you know, it was it was it was partially inspired and written around the LA fires. Um, that we experienced, Austin got evacuated, and things have been just crazy, you know, uh, mm. between Los Angeles and even we go play up in Northern California. We were up in Napa right after the fires up there, and uh, and so we were we were writing a song right, right in Disaster Party right around that time, and it really informed it, um, especially just like the connection between you know and between different people that can happen when there's a real kind of tragedy. You know, you could live just next to someone for ten years and never get past a hello but like if your whole neighborhood's about to go in flames like all of a sudden that's your that's your dude yeah that's right. your partner that's your bro and then after you get through it he's still your dude he's still your partner he's your, you know you never go back to the lame hand hand, hand wave again right you know? uh, and where Zang grew up in Los Angeles you know you told me stories about like standing, standing yeah when I was a kid we get evacuated like 
you know, every other year or something. And I remember one year it was real bad. It was getting close. So my dad's like, yo, get on the roof, start hosing it down. Like I had to hose down my roof as a 10 year old kid hosing down my roof. I was like, just petrified. I was like, oh my gosh, is this like, if I don't water this corner, it may burn down. I need to water my whole roof because if the fires come, my roof is wet enough and all my things won't burn and go to, sh to ash. I was like, yeah. So like, yeah, a lot of those things, I guess I don't realize that um, we were so close to them growing up and they really like affected our neighborhoods and our you know whole community, community around there. Yeah. So, so when we were writing the song, you know, we were, you know, a lot of times when you're writing a song, it's not just about one thing, it's about maybe just like a, a little time period, it's almost like a little snapshot or time capsule. Um, but in the bridge, you know, we say, maybe the world is broken, but our house is always open. And that was kind of like our mantra around it, where it's like, you know, you can, you, things can be kind of going to shite, but you know, you don't, you can, you can power through it. You can party through it, kind of. I mean, sometimes things happen that are just so bad that like, you can't be like fake happy about it. It's not worth saying, but like, you know, in certain situations you can kind of, you can. Some things it. are also out of your control and that's yeah. where it's like, you know, you might as well get to get like, if the world is going to shit, let's just get together and throw a rager. That's the best we can do. Yeah, I remember I had one uncle that when he passed, like uh, at his at his wake, it kind of like turned into a party afterwards. You know, they like bust. They were and I'm Irish. You know, they bust out the drink. And the first like 20 minutes, it was maybe like a summer vibe. But by like 45 minutes in, it was like bumping and dancing, and everyone's like. This is what he want us to do. Or yeah, you know, everyone right. just like getting hammered and being like, "This is what he'd want," you know. Yeah, so that's great. Our, that's our disaster. Party. Yeah, it's the kind of that vibe where it's like you, know, you can always you can always kind of uh, affect some kind of positivity in a situation, even if it is like really super dark. You know? Yeah, and especially on the like less extreme versions. Like I, over the last few years, I've just tried to laugh at myself when I if I drop my phone in the toilet or whatever. You know, like I could be like, "Oh no," you know, but instead I just yeah. I just laugh it off. And it's, it's nicer. Depends if it's like pre or post bathroom. If it was pre bathroom, <laughs> like, oh, it was supposed to be like, oh, oh I'm no. Yeah. It's a disaster party. Oh. You just wrote the music video. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, I read one thing I got to ask about because it seems like a crazy story. Yeah. And I'm sure you get it all the time. Yeah. You were in some sort of accident and woke up a savant to yeah. play the violin. So yeah, um, I was hit by a car when I was 13 and uh, my brain hemorrhage, I uh, went into a coma and uh, when, I, when I came home from the hospital, I taught myself how to play the violin, you know, in a matter of a few hours. I also lost my sense of smell during, after it and then, so I had this thing where I came home from the hospital and you know, my parents were at work, everybody was gone, so it was just like me, my totally kind of fucked brain and you know time and just my, my house you know so things that were there so uh so my cousin had, take, had started taking violin lessons so we had a violin and I picked it up and just started playing it and after a few minutes I could do the vibrato and I could kind of hit the notes and then I remember like by the next day I was like I remember thinking like I'm ready to like go go like go do this thing. That's enough. That's enough practice. I was like ready to play on stage. You know what I mean? I remember getting, like, just like show like you've been practicing for the game or whatever. And now you're like, all right, let's go. I remember next day I'd be like, let's do this shit. Like let's let's, let's go. Let's go. Um, and I kind of never looked back from I mean, it. I started writing songs. And there's uh, there's home videos of me like before the accident and after the accident that like I got, they showed me at my family when I was we were hanging over Christmas, you know, you bust out the VHS tapes or whatever. And like before, you know, I was like I was like a sweet kid or whatever. I was like, hey, look at there's a tree and there's a rainbow or whatever. And then after I was like wearing there's this video, I was like wearing my my older sister's like brassiere over a shirt and I was like and I was like totally like huh and I was like still in it like after the accident. I was like still but I was just like making shit up, you know? So it kind of like it's kind of like gave me a reset, almost like take Cracked the open a little yeah, you take brain. the etch a sketch, and you shake it up, and you get a chance to kind of like give another go. So that was the vibe. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. But now you're here. Now I'm here. Maybe as a result of that. Yeah. You know, it's there. Th st little things like that, or you know, really anything can set your life on a different course. You know, but yeah, it is it it is like set and setting because. If I wasn't, if I didn't live in a place where that I had access to, like I, to, to an instrument, maybe I never would have done it. If I lived in France, maybe I would become a French chef. My, around my house, <laughs> I would have grabbed all the spices, threw them in the pot, and created, you know, fondue. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two 
How's slightly it? better than fondue one. Fond fond two. Fond two. How was your French accent? Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? So we shall see. <laughs> Okay, uh, so where can people uh, find y'all uh, on the interwebs? Yep, magicgiant.com. Uh, um, or at magicgiant. At magicgiant on all the Twitters and the Instagrams. It's not, there's no the magicgiant or the band, it's just at magicgiant. Nice. We had to kill a few people on Twitter to <laughs> get that handle, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was worth it. You get that verification? Oh, man. Because that's the next step. Uh, I don't know, do we have it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. we have it. Nice. Nice. Great. And then we have the handle at verification. So <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Smart. <laughs> and that's verified. So <laughs> Yeah. Everybody that's messages verified. you to try to get verified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we just lurk on people's pages. They're like, verify, at verified. Just, ver <laughs> just message me. You know, maybe I'll get verified. <laughs> Everyone's kissing your butt on Twitter because you're verified. This is a brilliant scam. <laughs> Thanks, man. Really. <laughs> and all your DMs are just sending back, go stream our song. Go yeah. stream this thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a classic side hustle, you know. We were, talking about a, we were talking about a side hustle on the way here. You know, we're about to go on this April tour, so we have, like, a tour bus, you know, which is, like, it's a big thing. Yeah. You know, it, that drinks a lot of gasoline. And we're like, instead of renting a tour bus, let's just buy a limousine with a trailer. <laughs> we'll go around, we'll just do acoustic, and the limousine we just paid for, in with a trailer, and Ronnie, our radio ref for the thing, he's driving. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Simple. Right? I mean, and then yeah, after we'll the, the tour... The, the, the thing up, the screen between us. <laughs> yeah. <It's> exactly. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Not for Ronnie. That's all we bring And then I say up, I say I'm sent down. Yeah. We would be up, but we would put it down for Ronnie. Yeah, and then after the tour, we bought this limousine, we start a limo company, side, side hustle, hustle, magic giant limos, and then we do it. We'll right? sign it. We'll sign it in silver sharpie. Yeah, <laughs> way better than you know renting a tour bus. And you can't change the radio, unfortunately. It's only our stuck. record playing. Yeah, exactly. It's just but it's one of those things where it's just stuck there. We don't know what happened. <laughs> really, it was like a dot of super glue stuck our album. <laughs> that's a uh, that's what Pantera did. If what uh, you're familiar with that band, they had like a, they had like that, a. Like, uh, that's uh, a soul. A strip club and a limo service. They had like a car oh, service. Yeah. Genius. So Which I'm sure was just purely so they could get in limos. Yeah, and go to the strip with club. the strippers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we have a we have a thing that we uh, some of us on the podcast like to do every episode <laughs> with our guests uh, that we like to call the Dark Side Records Lightning Round. Lightning Round. <laughs> I throw a whole bunch of reverb on it. Like it, it'll oh, okay. sound great Sorry. in post. I promise. Shoot, shoot. I didn't have to do that then. Uh, so it, 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 it's rules are simple. We'll just rapid fire, throw a bunch of questions at you. It's just top of the dome. First gut reaction responses mm. to things. I'd like to point out that yes. every time you brought this up, yes. today you've said dome. I don't think you've ever said dome nice. before. Which you is, know, I'm not feeling. Is that because we're from Cali? Well? <laughs> 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 He's like, you said you're from California. Let me throw oh, some big language in there. Dome. We have this Yo, uh, party stretch. gift of avocado baskets for you guys as well. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's been nice. a while. Nice. Uh, is there kale with it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just learned about that there uh, was like a whole thing, I think it was called like Squat, squat avocado, squat some something like that. Like squash where and avocado. People were making avocado. They were making guacamole out of squash. Ooh, and squash and not out of avocado. Squash and mole, maybe. I don't know. But uh, but basically, like, no, got found out that restaurants were doing so that, LA and then sounding. people were squash shitting them. Mole. That's nice. So I went fun. to squaw because I thought you were matching avocado and pigeons. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, this is our uh, lightning round. Lightning round. round. You know the rules. Actually, you didn't say the rules. <laughs> yeah, just Remember off the dome. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. So, um, whatever goes into your domes, you just say to, to say us it. one more time. Dome. Uh, dome. Here we go. Apples. Avocados or squash? Avocados. Squash. Squash and molly. <laughs> uh, favorite Pauly Shore film? Encino Man. Yuck, yeah. Oh. I, took the, I took the only What's that one that had a bop in their head? Every one of them. <laughs> oh, Night of the Roxbury? Night of the Roxbury. <laughs> I didn't see that. Is he in that? I don't know. Was he? I don't think so. Dude. Oh, he's not even in that. Okay. 
Alright, so uh, way too long. There's you guys too way too long. Forbid this is called the light. This is called <laughs> this is called the lightning round. Uh, go, go, go. Meandering uh, whatever. Favorite had... favorite Baldwin. Piano. Oh, <laughs> that was the first thing you Next. Uh, ooh. Uh, that next Tracy. Who the fuck is Tracy? It's like a third cousin that's still <laughs> called Baldwin. It's not actually. They're not technically related. Okay. I hate this. Uh, Good game, man. Best yogurt flavor. Greek. Not frozen. Greek is not a flavor, but honey. Style. Style. Honey. Uh, there's these uh, soba or nuba things that have like little thing in the bottom. We stir it up. Oh, the mixing ones Blueberry. are so gross. Yeah. I like it, dude. I'm putting on the ride. It's on a rider. I just oh. added it. You're gonna have to see it every day on the oh. rider. We're causing division now. <laughs> uh, who? Who? D- divisive. Divisive. What's the word of the day again? Band's breaking up after this. Yeah, right? (laughs) Uh, Who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Lemmy is God. True question. Lemmy is Uh, God. God is. Lemmy. You are you are right. Chuck Norris. That's the only one that actually has a right answer. Uh, That specific question. Chuck Norris is the right answer? Sure. Uh, Oh, yeah, you should have said that. Favorite 70s era singer songwriter? John Denver. Hmm. Paul Simon. Mm. He's not 70s, he's more 60s, dude. Yeah, but he's still he was he alive. Was making in the a 70s. lot of Oh my god, Top Garfunkel of the- was 60s. Yeah, was, but after he left Garfunkel, he was no longer really a singer songwhater. What? In That's the same exactly sense. what he was. He was Somebody's a contrarian, I think. He was in more of Somebody's divisive. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word of the day, divisive. <laughs> and compelling. It was the word of the day. I don't know who's from the 70s. Uh, Singer, songwriter from the 70s, another one? I mean, that's... Yeah, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen's a great. Bruce. Bruce Springsteen's great. Great. What is love? Got to do with it. Got to do with it. Just an emotion. The, the, the heart's... Uh, the heart, what is it? It's from Wedding Crashers. <laughs> <laughs> The heart's it's like the understanding of its counterpart in another. Something like that. Love is uh, probability meeting compatibility meeting passion. Meeting time. The soul's recognition of its counterpart in another, yeah, that's what it is. This wow. is the deepest answer we've ever gotten to that question. <laughs> I ask that one every time we do this and usually we get like, you know, baby don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. Oh, of course. Or like that a song there. Yeah. yeah. But that was the deepest response we ever got. <laughs> but that was, I was quoting a movie, though. It's okay. okay. Yeah, it's okay. The movie was deep. Okay. So Very deep. Especially Crashers? considering it comes from Wedding Crashers, it makes it more significant. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. How many digits of pi can you recite? 3.14159, stop that tackle, drop that line or something. <laughs> I was more of a sine, sine, cosine, sine, 3.14159 yeah, kind of guy. Ooh. Cosine, secant, tangent, sine, 3.14159. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know anything. He speaks! <laughs> <laughs> Only three options. <enough>. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I honestly don't know. I probably didn't know 3.14. He actually had to 3.1, 1, and he was like, I'm from California, what? <laughs> Look, we need all types of brains. Can, can in you this guys world, recite it? You know? you guys, no, he's, no, he's, no, he's, no. Both these guys actually have a great m- mind for math. Both these two guys. I do not. I do not I as well. Not my strong suit. Yeah, they're both good. They they have both sides of the brain. Creative square root is difficult brain. though. The square root of pi. The square root of pi. Yeah. Is pi? That's the whole point. And scene. <laughs> what I did there? Yeah. I took a non-truth and made it sound <laughs> very real. <laughs> yeah, now we're just lying. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta watch my Suddenly it's a news conference on an interview. <laughs> What's the square root of negative one? One. I, thank you. Uh, I? I. Italic. All right, smarty Italic pants. I. And turn into a show. Yes, yeah, I, I know, I know. Yeah, okay. yeah, this yeah. is a really weird nerd fight that this is turning into. <laughs> Divisive again. Yeah. Yet again. Cool. Well, listen. Divisive. Guys, thank you so much for being here and being on the Dude, podcast. Thank you. Thank you By for, the way, the lightning playing round store. is fun. You, you survived really the lightning <laughs> round. Well done. I'm not clapping for this. <laughs> uh, so, go stream the new single. Uh, I'm talking to listeners now. Uh, go stream new single. Um, go support the band on tour. You can find all their tour dates at magicgiant.com.
Dot edu. Nah, 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 nah. Dot edu, I thought. <laughs> dot gov. <laughs> Creedthoughts.gov. Dot blogspot. Uh, so, thanks for coming by. Uh, and if you are listening to this and you want a little taste of the band, can we play your single at the end of this uh, interview? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yes. And go check out our Facebook page because there uh, is a couple photos and some videos of your guys' performance okay. from uh, our store. Woo! Probably there. It's probably there by now. There. And this is our new single titled Disaster Party. Here we go. Disaster party